Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to the bar. It is now Wednesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm back. I think it's the first time that we've been back at the bar now that 2023 has started. I was supposed to be streaming last week, but I got sick with the COVID, unfortunately. Lard by the Pound is here with an emote that says it's called Obey Me 3. Cozy, cozy, cozy indeed. We actually have a fire, speaking of cozy, we actually have a fireplace in this apartment that Anna and I moved into. We've never actually used it. It's currently behind our couch and the little mantle that's over top of it is what my tall friends smack their heads on when they think it's time to relax. It's always time to relax, but unfortunately they wind up getting hurt when they do so. It's a, it's a, it's a work in progress. It's not, like a, it's not like anybody sued us for it yet. And that's probably a good thing. To everybody out there, no matter where you are in your journey, I wanna say hi there, greetings, and I hope you're doing well because the start of the new year at least treated me a little bit crazily. I was at a conference a couple of weeks ago. I, as I mentioned before, I got COVID on my way back from the conference and technically speaking, I'm still contagious and I have not been back to work except for the one day or back in the office, that is, so as to not spread it to my coworkers. So I am here partying on my lonesome. Just kidding, Anna is home. We've been keep keeping ourselves separated. I have been sleeping on the very cozy couch, but it's okay. Get rid of COVID, and then you can sleep in the Get rid of COVID, and then I can sleep back in the bed. It's true. You did this stream three days too late. Three days too late? No! Well, hopefully we can pack in enough content to make up for the time difference, at least. Today's episode is all about... Where's the bottle? The bottle's blocking the little thing over there. Fernet Branca. Fernet Branca. It's the it's this liqueur right here. Fernet Branca popped up on my radar, I think, about two, two-ish years ago. I was watching a, a content creator online by the by the name of Greg from How to Drink, and he did a whole episode on Fernet, and it was about how to combine Coca-Cola and Fernet Branca together to create a Fernet con Coca, which is literally Fernet and Coca-Cola, which is apparently all the rage over in Argentina. I was like, I've got to try that. I have one drink that I can make with this. I'm gonna go to the store and buy a whole bottle. So I did, and since then I'm like, what else can you make with this delightfully, delightfully menthol-y, bitter Amaro spirit? And um, that's actually quite a bit that you could do with it. And so what I want to do is I want to start things off by making a Fernet con Coca. It's literally Fernet and Coca-Cola in various ratios. And then we're going to dive a little bit into the history of Fernet Branca, uh, look at a couple of different recipes as well, uh, in, in, in addition to trying to figure out what exactly is on the inside of the, the botanicals that make Fernet Branca, the beautiful Italian liqueur that it is, widely popular in Argentina. Um, and there's a couple of them, and there's at least 40, but we I think these books that I have here cover at least three or three to seven of them. Lord by the Ten says, my 22nd was on the 15th. Oh my goodness, you had a birthday? Homie Cradoodles! We have to celebrate that. We celebrate things around here. I don't have a party horn over here, but I do have this really, really awesome good vibes fan that I have. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to sing a happy birthday song to you. Um, we still haven't exactly worked out in the workshop the happy birthday song that is branded for this channel um, But I'm gonna go with a classic, um, but I'm gonna do it with my eyes closed. So it's special A one a two a one two three happy birthday to you Happy birthday to you happy birthday to lard by the pound Happy birthday to you and many good vibes further I hope it was a wonderful one. On the bright side, at least you've been able to legally drink, at least in my country of residence, for, I guess, a single year now. So congratulations for that. I'm gonna jump right into it. Hopefully now you can take your, you can take your 20-second ID card and go to the store and be like, I want a Fernet Branca, please. And they'll be like, okay, you can go grab it on the shelf over there. You didn't have to come up and ask for it. Let's get into it. So the current recipe that we have, oh, I need to get a big old, gotta get a big old marker. Where's my big old markers? Oh, come on. Oh, there you are. Ha ha, I found you. I got bigger white markers now so I can do things correctly. It's great. Over a year, a year and three days. This is true. The correction was swiftly coming. The Fernet con Coca, that's what it's called. It directly translates to Fernet with Coca. Her recipe. Fernet. If I knew how to draw like the whole like fancy like Coca-Cola thing, like I totally would have gone in for it. I should I could have drawn that bigger. I can always draw these things better. I'm still working on my lighting setup over here. A Fernet con Coca is actually super duper simple. It's Fernet Branca 
and Coca-Cola together. The ratio is up for debate, but there's a couple of different like popular ratios out there. There's like a half and half, there's a 70-30 split, I think there's a 90-10 split, which I think they call the 90-10, 90, 90, not 2, 90, 90, 90, because it's 90-2-10. And like, I kinda, I kinda wanna, I kinda wanna change, like, um, I wanna, I want to be able to taste it all at the different ratios and stuff, but I kind of want to keep it simple. So I'm going to go with half Coca-Cola and half Fernet. I'm going to get back there a little bit. I need Coke. Yeah, Coke. I don't know whether you're supposed to like straight this or strain this. Lord by the Pound says, do you remember my username? I can't remember. I changed it since my last time here. Lord by the Pound. I recall there being a Lord by the Pound around here. Did you perhaps go by a different name? Because I do, I do not remember. Um, it's tough for me to distinguish who is who. Like, if you change your name completely, like, all I have is your name. And, like, technically the color of your username, if you, like, keep track of that. Other than that, if you pop in here by a totally new name, I would have no idea. You didn't pop up as a first-time chatter for me, so apparently you've been around here before, but I definitely remember a, a lard by the pound or something. In any case, if you've been around here before, <laughs> welcome the heck back. <laughs> We're glad to have you. So, um, according to at least one recipe I have here, there is absolutely no directions on how to make a Fernet con coca. Incredible. Well, perchance, we just put it in a glass. We put some ice in a glass, and we mix equal parts of our Fernet and coke in it. Perhaps, perhaps, maybe lemon bar? Lemon bar. Maybe lemon bar. Lemon bar. Lemon bar? Lemon grab? Lemon bar? Lemon Grab says, what did he say? I've actually never watched Adventure Time. I'm grabbing a big ice cube for, for context. Grab that lemon bar. I don't know. Does this fit in my glass? It's like... Ah, it's not the bottom. I need a different glass. I dislike this completely. Unacceptable! That was the one. That was the one. That was the thing that Lemon Grab says. Never watched Adventure Time is what is unacceptable is when he says, I've never watched Adventure Time. I know. This is like... This is unforgivable, right? It's on my list of shows to watch because it's kind of long, it's kind of intimidating. Insert suggestive comment here. And I'm just not ready to take on that um, that commitment yet. As the man who's been in a relationship with, the same, with a single woman for nine plus years, I am deathly afraid of commitment, as can be perfectly seen. Fernet con coca, mix the two parts together. It's so easy to do. I don't need that much for a minute, so I'm gonna measure out probably an ounce to an ounce. And if that seems like it's okay, then great. I haven't cracked open this bottle yet, so it's sticky. And there we go. We actually opened it. That's gonna happen a couple more times this stream. Like it's a kid's show, but it's not. Yeah, like that, I need I know that lives within the same vein of my mind as um let's see, uh, Adventure Time, Gravity Falls, I know I need to watch. I'm only doing an ounce, like a scant ounce. Like 50 milliliters in this one. No, it's not. It's 25. Yeah, I think that's all I need. Hear that Coca-Cola crack? Oh yes, <laughs> oh lovely. Yeah, but I, I eventually do want to watch it. It's like, the reason why I haven't watched it yet is to, to my point before, it's kind of long and I really want to have the opportunity to like take that show in like properly because I know it's got a lot of depth to it and I know it was a personal favorite of a couple people in my life. Uh, and I want to be able to watch it and not forget that I watched it. Oftentimes when I watch shows, I will watch them and then just kind of forget that I watched them. Or, or not, I won't forget that I watched them. I will like, I just won't remember all the like good, good details from them. And I don't want to do that to Adventure Time. I don't want to do that to Gravity Falls. So I'm waiting for, for a time where I can like, uh, like think about it a little bit more. Regular show is on there, but more fantasy D&D, true. I've heard, um, what's it called? Mm, regular show. Uh, the Amazing World of Gumball is also in that very same list there of shows that I want to spend more time watching because they're kids shows, but like they're not, they're not really kids shows. Well, are, maybe kind of are. I wouldn't know. I haven't watched them. So I have in my glass a Fernet con coca, which I mixed in a 50-50 ratio. You could do other ratios. Really, there's no rules to how you're supposed to be putting this thing together. So long as you take the Fernet and add the coca or take the coca and add the Fernet, you're pretty much good to go. You can literally put as a splash of Fernet in your Coca-Cola and it's still a Fernet con Coca. 
I think. There are various different, I guess there's probably like different themes, different names that you could call particular ratio combinations, but I'm just going with the basic co, because I already know that I like it this way. And you can go anywhere up to a splash of Coca-Cola in your Frenet, really all you want to do. Another popular combination that you can use Frenet with, and I haven't personally tried it myself, is you take the Frenet Branca and you combine it with coffee. You put it in your coffee, which you could with pretty much any Amaro out there. There are so many different options of the ones that are available. Pretty much any liqueur and coffee, I feel like is a good combo. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that is a bad combination with coffee. And I'm really trying to think. I don't know. Dom says, ooh, I'm changing my sleep schedule to be more of a night owl again. Oh, does that mean you're sticking around? Personally, I just don't like coffee. That's fair. That's a totally valid point. Anna hates coffee. And um, I'm f constantly finding more and more ways to get her to try coffee. Perhaps deceptively, and it does work. A Fernet con coca tastes like what? It smells a little mentally. I would say that, oh, actually, you know what? Let's take a little bit of Fernet in a little cordial glass. Because if we're going to be comparing things to Fernet, if the whole episode is about Fernet Branca, then we might as well have a good baseline to start off with. I'll kind of pour it into my little thing here. I'll take a little sniff of it. I'll take a little sip of it. And then as we learn more about Fernet, things that even I don't know, because I'm not really a master here, we'll kind of refine it. We'll think about it a little bit more, you know? As we learn more and more and more. Fernet Branca has an O of chocolate, I'd say. Kind of cocoa, cocoa sugary. There's a little bit of like, almost barbershoppy. It's almost like, yeah, if you've ever been to a barbershop and you see like all this stuff in like, not barbersaw, it's called barbicide, I think. They use it to like disinfect all their like tools and whatnot. It kind of smells like barbicide a little bit. Barbicide is in like homicide of the barber or the homicide of the, sh the hairs on your face. It's powerful. Hits the tongue at, what proof is this? It's almost 80 proof. It's a 39% alcohol by volume container of alcohol. So it's very potent there. It's bitter. It's right up in front, bitter right on my tongue. It's got an air of menthol to it, an air of mint. It's got other things going on. It seems very grassy to me, almost twig-like. There's a, apparently 40 different botanicals that um, the House of Branca or House of Frenet, I believe, the, the information's in one of these books over here, we'll get there. Um, that they use to actually like spice this thing up and make it special. There's 40 different of them. Uh, and I think there's like seven or so that we can actually mainly um, pick out, which I have in my lexicons over here. I went to sleep at 10 a.m. says Dom and woke up at like 2 p.m. So I'll just be staying awake. I've been kind of up late recently too. I've been, um, a, a friend of mine bought for me a game called Dwarf Fortress, which I played when I was younger and they completely did a whole graphical overhaul of it. So I've been spending a lot of time on that. Mm. It's nice. So, when I'm tasting the Fernet con coca with the hat with the 50% Coca Cola and 50% Fernet Branca, I get like there's a bitterness there. It reminds me of coffee. The bitterness really reminds me of coffee. It's almost like I combined a little bit of like like the bitterness of a coffee bean, like coffee that's been steeped or I guess made cooked in the pot way too long. Um, that's what I'm getting like on the top of my tongue, but it's almost like it's chocolatey too. Almost like instead of maybe not even maybe instead of a coffee angle There's like a baking chocolate angle almost like I took a bit of baking chocolate and I have taken 100% cocoa and 92% cocoa and stuff Which I love and just like put it on my tongue and let it melt And it's almost as if I took a little piece of that and I let it sit on my tongue let it melt and now I'm like kind of I'm not swirling it around because there's no more liquid in my mouth, but it's also a little minty too. So it's almost like this is almost like like a bitter chocolate mint truffle is what I would go for. And like Coca-Cola to me has like, a, it's got a bit of, um, I, I know the, I think the flavor in there is supposed to be like sassafras or sarsaparilla root or something like that, but caramelly color, I think people say Coca-Cola tastes like caramel. I don't know. Just kind of, kind of tastes like cola to me. But combined, it's almost like I'm drinking like a chocolate mint truffle. And it's good. Definitely more on the minty note. It's nice. It tastes good chilled. I don't think I've ever actually had it not chilled. The Coca-Cola that I used was not chilled. I wonder if it would taste differently that way. The effervescence kind of like, it's, it's not really too noticeable to me, to be honest. It kind of gets lost in the Coke. Although, you can still hear it crackling a little bit. It's 
so good. I like that. I like that. In any case, so Frenet is kind of interesting. And now as I have my cocktail, we can kind of jump, jump into the, uh, the history of things a little bit. Usually, this is the first time I've really actually thought to myself that there's a bunch of different books that I have in my collection. Here's a few of them right here, which they're not being lit up by the camera, unfortunately. But there's so much information out there behind every single liqueur, every single type of base spirit, like the, the history of like what goes into making a particular spirit, like on a, at a particular distillery. There's a history behind the distillery itself. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not much of a history person, but I've realized that I'm still very far from the end of the road on my journey of really being able to pick out flavors from each other, really attempting being able to kind of take something, put it into my mouth, and really dissect what's going on on the inside. And I'm trying to figure out the best ways to do that. But along that, that journey, I feel like there's going to be a lot of, of context that I would be able to get there if I do a little more research. Uh, what I've started doing, uh, at least on the off chance, I changed up my schedule a little bit. I'm streaming every other Monday now, which used to be all games, but now on the uh, on the off Mondays when I'm not streaming I'm usually just kind of like hanging around on the discord server doing some research on cocktails or other content related stuff this week what I did is I kind of went through a few of my books I went through just different recipes online I tried to come up with different themes and whatnot and apparently I didn't come up with a very good set of themes yet they're not really fleshed out but I have a lot of them now and um, I came up with this literally the last moment because there was like four or five recipes in the collection that I have that that claim for Net Branca, and including from one of these books that I pulled off the shelf the other day, just called Around the World in 80 Cocktails, and there was one in there that combined, well, we'll get to it, it combined ingredients in a way that I wasn't necessarily expecting, I was very, very curious to try. So I was like, you know what? Let's make a whole episode about it. But to that point of attempting to kind of round out the context of the different things that we're putting into our mouth, it's important to figure out where that stuff comes from. Because kind of, we're living in a world now where the stuff that winds up being put on the table in front of you, you don't necessarily know where it came from. The details of how it was made are abstracted because all you're looking at is the phenotype. What comes out the other side and what you experience by touching it and smelling it and tasting it and stuff, but not necessarily what goes on the inside. They say, that there is cyanide in apples. However, it's in the seeds, and we don't usually use the seeds for cooking, at least not to my knowledge. Um, oftentimes, they'll be like, you know, there's 40 different botanicals in a liqueur like this. It's hard to pick out all of them, and it kind of becomes a fun little game. As I was reading through some of the context here, there's, like, it, it's, it's interesting that people will kind of allege that, oh, this particular liqueur is made with this particular botanical, and they may be like, maybe? Maybe not. It's a family recipe. It's a secret recipe. We're not going to tell you, but people get a, a pretty good idea uh, over the course of the years and stuff. So as I was looking for context on Fernet Branca, I went and I opted for one of these books that I have here, which I picked up at one of the local bookstores and I took it home with me. It's a beefy, beefy, beefy lexicon called The Ultimate Guides to Spirits and Cocktails. And I am a textbooky kind of person. So you may think to yourself, did he go through the whole book already? No, I absolutely have not. I use it more so as like an encyclopedia of different spirits and stuff to try to see if there's any sort of historical context that I may be missing on these spirits and stuff. So I want to jump right in with Cameron's encyclopedia time, Cameron's knowledge time at the bar. See, the bright side of not having anybody physically sitting at my bar or hounding me for drinks is that I can take as much time as I want to. We can learn a little bit along the way. We can really enjoy the journey of the cocktail that we are putting into our bodies. Our bodies are temples, and temples have history, I assume. Not unless it was like a temple made out of like post-it notes and stuff and paper clips and stuff, and you just kind of blew the whole damn thing down. But even, even paper card towers, like card towers, have history to them, I feel. Dom says, dude, sometimes getting the history of a drink can help you appreciate the drink a bit more. It's totally true. Having the history of anything can really make you appreciate it. I feel like I've definitely seen at least one television show out there where, like, the adult is taking the child around the museum and they're just like, take a look at all this you see around you. Look at all the beautiful history. Imagine the thousands of years of progress and civilization that came to create these crafts in front of you. And the child's just like, but it's a painting. I've seen tons of paintings online. Or, like, it's, it's a statue. Like, it's just a big funny rock that looks like a man who's naked. I mean, what's the history, what's the splendor behind that? But I feel like, and maybe it's a concept of maturity, or maybe it's a factor of age, where now I, I kind of, I feel like I look at things and I'm like, you know what? I can appreciate the history behind stuff. And there's an interesting exercise that I had in a freshman year class of mine in college, where the, the task was to take 10 objects in your home, in your dormitory, and write the story of how it came to be in your possession for all 10 of them. And it really made you think 
think about things. And there's a lot of history on things around you. It's, it's a little philosophical, but it's kind of cool to think about. Tamale Johnson has popped in here saying, how's it going? Gotta love Fernet. I do gotta love Fernet. And there are scant number of bottles in my collection who I have gone to the store and purchased multiple of. Fernet, I believe, was one of them. Um, Campari is obviously one of them. You gotta, you gotta use your Campari, gotta use your Fernet. There's probably more too. Oh, God, Di Serona Amaretto, just like a staple in my particular family. Tamale Johnson over here, by the way, is somebody who I met the other day on Sunday, is also a cocktail creator, and uh, he was doing a lot of tiki work and whatnot. And uh, I haven't explored too many tiki drinks myself, but it was really cool watching him make, I think I popped in for his, it was a lychee daiquiri. I've had a lychee martini before, and it was really cool, and that lychee daiquiri, which kind of, it takes lychee and adds, I believe, lime juice to it in the, in the daiquiri fashion. And I believe some simple syrup as well, if I'm correct in saying. Tamale can correct me on this if necessary. Campari, Fernet, all the dry curacao. Oh my goodness. I have a really hard time finding dry curacao in my liquor store for some reason. Like I tried to go to the store and buy dry curacao and the closest that I could find is this like orange liqueur that's like, I think made in Chile, which is close enough to curacao if I'm getting my geography correctly. Um, but it's cool stuff. So if you're here hanging, and you like cocktail stuff, I would definitely recommend checking out Tamale Johnson as well. Um, my keyboard is broken over here, otherwise I would... Wait, actually, I can do this. I know how to do it. Oh, I recently added chat rules, I didn't realize that. Shout out there. Uh, Tamale. I hope I did that right. Did I do it right? Heck yeah! Dude, follow Tamale Johnson. Love people who create cocktails on the internet. We're a small group of folks, but we're pleasant. I don't know where I was going on that tangent, and I got a little distracted there because of some wonderful people out here. Um, but I'm gonna try to put things back on track. It, this happens all the time. Don't feel bad about it. I lose my I lose track, and I go off on tangents literally all the time. Thanks for the kind words and shout out, just a tiki dude. But so stoked you popped in the other day. It was super duper cool. I was like, like every once in a while, you search cocktails on Twitch, and you really hope you find something good out there. And like a lot of times, it's just kind of folks playing video games and stuff. Like, but where's your cocktails and stuff? Hope maybe you're drinking a cocktail. Like I, I'm so tempted to pop into those types of streams and be like, "So what cocktail did you make?" But like for all I know, like it's just gonna be like cocktail. What are you talking about? <laughs> and it's and it's weird. And I don't want to be weird because I'm a little I'm a little awkward sometimes. In any case, we continue on. So Fernet Branca has a little bit of history behind it, and I plan on reading. There's like two pages of history here. I made some highlights and stuff like that just to kind of get a context of what what's got what brought Fernet Branca to the table to the bar. And so they say that Fernet Branca grips the world from its eagle claws. Eagle claws, if you get a little eagle here, it holds it, there's, a, there's an eagle on the bottle. I tried to draw it as best as I could over here. I think it, I think it looks pretty good. But they say that if you tilt a glass of Fernet Branca, you can clearly see the bitter's yellow rim, which I can actually see. Now that I think about it. I thought, I read that statement earlier and I was like, I don't actually know what they mean by a yellow rim on here. I wonder if we can, I'm very curious about that. Oh, my remote is on my desk. I wanna see if I can zoom in on that and see if we can actually see what the yellow ring looks like. Hi everybody, got my thing. And so we zoom and see if we can get a proper zoom on this. It is a kind of cool, there is kind of a yellow rim on this. I never actually noticed that. I thought yellow is just like kind of a different shade of brown, you know? I was just gonna ask if you drew the eagle, pretty darn good. Thank you, sir, thank you. You can actually kind of see, you can see the yellow, right? I can totally see a little bit of the yellow, you know? I do see that. They say the yellow rim is characteristic of, I'm gonna keep on reading my book, little yellow rim there, saffron, the king of its ingredients, as they say in the house. It takes almost 40 aromatics to make the recipe still unchanged to this day. These include aloe, juniper, musk milfoil, colombo root, Chinese rhubarb, and coffee. Coffee is actually used to make this stuff. Who knew? It is definitely yellow. It's definitely the yellow, right? I doubted that before I put it in the glass, but that's why we test things. We test things because it's cool to look at. Um, so there were a couple of notes there. There were a couple of things that we found on the board. Aloe, juniper, musk milfoil, don't know what that is. Colombo roots, Chinese rhubarb, and coffee. I'm actually curious to see how many different botanicals that we can find in our collections over here. So I'm gonna grab one of my these. Write them down. Botanicals and Fernet. Let's see, let's kind of do a little like a uh, little thing here. There was aloe, aloe. There's some juniper in there. Juniper is usually used for flavoring gin. Oftentimes we have musk milfoil, musk milfoil. <laughs> milfoil. 
<laughs> I kind of got to Google that. Columbo root. Can we get a fact check on what milf oil is? <laughs> oh my god. Columbo root. We've got four different botanicals so far. Chinese rhubarb, as opposed to, I guess, the not-so-Chinese rhubarb. Unless rhubarb itself is Chinese, in which case, rhubarb, rhubarb? And what was the other one? Kofi. Kofi. I most definitely don't spell coffee correctly, my guy. I definitely taste coffee in there. Check that off. I totally taste coffee. I know what coffee tastes like. I'm a well-versed coffee-holic. Not really. I haven't been drinking a lot of coffee since the... Uh, the coat since the sickness thing I'm trying to like dim dim down on all of my um all of my caffeination and whatnot um so i decided to drink coca-cola this evening obviously musk milf oil did i spell that correctly milf oil milf oil milf oil is literally how that's spelled sounds like the head of a family in harry potter colombo root does it solve murders <laughs> that's the thing right there's so many different things here. well now i gotta google it it's all it's all about learning together just to set the record straight <clears throat> Columbo root. Ah, I was confused for a moment. Wikipedia says Frasera carolinian caroliniensis. Frasera carolinian caroliniensis, commonly known as American Columbo or yellow gentian. Gentian is an herbaceous perennial of the gentian family Gentianaceae, found in the deciduous forest of southern Ontario and throughout the eastern and southwestern United southeastern United States. It was previously known as Swirtia caroliniensis. So that's what I assume Columbo root is. That's pretty cool. And what was the other one? Musk <laughs> milf oil. <laughs> This is great. It's basically it's basically a type of plant, like a classification is a plant. That makes sense. I guess there's a couple of different Columbo roots out there. And then simple leaved milk oil, aka Achillea herborata, the common name simple leaved milk oil is a perennial flowering plant of the genus Achillea belonging to the sunflower family. Musk ill it, It's a species of shrub in the family of Asteraceae. They have a self-supporting growth form, have simple broad leaves and etchings. I am not an herbalist, so I have no idea what that means. But now at least we know that milk oil did not come from a person who has born children who is promiscuous in their wiles. In any case, only natural flavorings are used, like the ones that we see here, including milk oil, Chinese rhubarb, and yellow and stuff, only, which are extracted by either maceration or cold soaking. Depending on the properties of the raw material, once all the ingredients are properly mixed, the bitters are put into large tons made of Slovenian oak in the extensive cellars of the company headquarters in the center of Milan. There's about 550 of these casks. Another thing to note, oak. Oak barrels, it might be contributing to the brown color that we see there. Which was Slovenian oak. Slovenian. All the things that make the ferment the stuff that you want to drink. Dom says, man, what a letdown, indeed. What a letdown that it's not the oil of certain promiscuous people who may or may not have birthed children directly. Or or will do it through indirect methods. I'm not sure. Mothers are a uh, an anomaly. I don't know. Um, 550 of these huge casks are dedicated to the dedicated to the bitters, where they are kept for about a year. So they're aged for a year in Milan in Slovenian oak barrels with 40 plus different botanicals and a recipe that hasn't changed over the course of many many years. All the production stages are now controlled by the latest technology. Excuse me. But the time-consuming procedure has remained unchanged. If you're acquainted with the laborious production process, you'll find it hardly surprising that Fernet Branca turns out to be a very complex and digestible liqueur. At the same time, the first sip can prove a bit of a shock. There was a lot of bitterness there, at least on my first sip of the evening. This may be why a young clientele has specifically introduced new ways of drinking it, enjoying a Fernet as a shot, a cocktail, a long drink with ginger ale, as in California, which I haven't tried, actually, and with cola, specifically Coca-Cola in my case, Branca Menta, the version of Fernet Branca with peppermint is a popular choice for this bait, but in Italy, they adore Fernet and coffee as Café Corretto e la Morte, espresso with death. And there's a bunch of other things to be said about Fernet Branca. It's, I have some other things here that says it's supposedly the most famous bitter in the world. It's widely popular in Argentina, pretty much taking the country by storm. People love to mix Fernet Branca and Coca-Cola over in Argentina. So much so that throughout the entire family history of creating Fernet Branca, they only put one factory outside of Milan, and it's in Argentina because of its popularity. 
go figure. And there's a couple of things here, like history about like the um, uh, the original Fernet Branca guy, Bernardi Bernardino Branca, a well-to-do citizen, passing it down through I think five generations. Um, it seemed to be all the way back. It was first made by Mr. Bernardino Branca in 1845, a while ago. <laughs> Topic for another day. Top uh, comments about <gasps> milfoils. Anyways. We continue onwards. That's pretty much all there is on this book, at least about uh, Fernet Branca. I think what's really interesting to me is that when I looked up Fernet Branca in the different lexicons that I have sourced, uh, that I have available to source from, is that there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. When I saw from the one book, 40 botanicals, I was like, geez, well, what kind of botanicals are in there? I can only taste a couple of them. And evidently, my tongue only tastes cocoa, which is probably coming from the coffee, the coffee, which is probably coming from the coffee, and probably a couple other things too. Did I write saffron on there? I didn't put saffron on there. That's another one too. I don't know how to spell saffron. I'm gonna do my best. Sa Alexa, how do you spell saffron? Don't you spell It's the double F. I'm glad that I got it. It will then be these, um, these would these machines will not mistake me. I'm gonna put this over here. I like that book. I don't often go through my ultimate guide to cocktails and spirits every um I, like I don't usually go through it very often. It's got a couple of recipes in it, but like it's kind of hard to source from. But it's a very good uh, lexicographical source. I think it's old though. I don't know how up to date the info is on there. And I probably have a better time if potentially I went and looked at a more like like more modern encyclopedia and one perhaps a little more focused on liqueurs like popular liqueurs in particular like for example Fernet Branca or um Campari Aperol or what else do we have here well <coughs> excuse me rum chata is really cool what other fancy liqueurs do I have down here there's plenty down there just just ask me and we shall receive them how do you spell saffron if you have to ask you can't afford it it's it's true saffron is really expensive i found saffron i go to this tea place every single year it's a spice and tea exchange on hilton head island and i always go in there to buy my tea every single year they usually have like a pick six get the seventh free pick seven get the eighth free i think after the COVID times and i love going in there and stuff and one time one time I saw saffron and I was like, how difficult is it to get my hands on saffron if I don't buy it right now? And they were like, it's kind of expensive and a little difficult to come by. And I was like, okay, well, I don't need it right now. I don't know what I'm gonna use saffron with, so I'm gonna wait. And two years later, I've been trying to find saffron literally anywhere and I went back each year and I don't see the saffron and I kind of want it. And so one day I will drop some money on saffron. I also saw this wild video of somebody supposedly taking like an entire barrel full of saffron and just like sticking their hands in it and pouring oil all over it. And I was like, it must be fake because that is thousands and thousands of dollars that you're just covering in just like basic canola oil. Like why? What is the point? I don't know. I've never actually had saffron. I wonder if saffron is like, I guess bitter might be a saffron thing. It also gives a distinct color, at least in this case, a kind of yellowish hue to the glass that we have here. My Fernet has kind of been sitting for a little while, unchilled, and I'm kind of curious if the flavors have changed around a little bit. Definitely a lot more muted now. Not as strong on like the minty notes now that it started to oxidize. Oh, there was something else there. It's like, there are notes that I get that I can't quite pick apart in the very beginning, and then it fades to like this mintiness and to be honest if branca menta is the one that has the peppermint in it i don't know what botanical it is that causes that kind of mentholated effect here it might be one of the ones listed here already i feel like juniper I've, some gins have had that kind of mentholy like quality so i wonder if some of that is being imparted by the juniper in there i don't really know but when we talk about botanicals and stuff, I picked up this one book over the holiday called The Drunken Botanist, which was a recommendation from somebody else who also does cocktails on Twitch called Ender Potion. Um, and so I, I'm really glad I asked because she does a lot, I think she does a lot of like homemade stuff and whatnot. And it was really, really cool to watch. But The Drunken Botanist is basically an herbalism book that puts all the different botanicals and stuff in context of what different liqueurs that you may find them in and stuff. And it provides a really, really cool context, not necessarily on uh, both on the herbs and botanicals themselves the way that you would find them out in the wild and out and about but also like how they get used and in what ways and the kind of history behind them so far there's only been one botanical since i got this last month that i couldn't find in this book other than that every other one i've been able to find and then today i was like yo can i pick out a liqueur and go into this book and see if i can figure out what botanicals are inside of it 
and you can. And the index in the back actually sort, it'll show you by index of the particular botanical itself, as well as liqueurs that you may find those botanicals in which I thought was really freaking cool, and I love this book. It's called The Drunken Botanist, The Plants That Create the World's Great Drinks by Amy Stewart, a New York Times bestseller for a good reason. Rice Aroni says, that's the Columbo root. It's always there with just one more question. The question being, is the bitter you're getting from me? Or is it from the aloe? Is it from the juniper? Is it from something else? Is it from the coffee? Are you high? Maybe, I don't know. But so, a couple other things that I find in this book here. First thing that I find is aloe. Aloe, indeed, is uh, kind of mentioned twice in these lists of these different books. I don't think these books have anything to do with one another, so there's bound to be a little bit of overlap. So I'll wind up tallying it off. So aloe has, this is green. I don't want green, I want white. Aloe has two strikes. That's kind of cool. Aloe being as Asphodelicae, the aloe vera, aloe vera family. I love aloe vera. Something about succulents, dude. We love a good succulent around here. <laughs> I am, lol. Obviously, you are the bittery components. Another one that it says is it gets from saffron, obviously. Saffron I'm actually very curious about, so I'm going to do a little bit of searching here uh, and figure out what saffron is. This is, the, this is the page on saffron. Oh no, I lost a bookmark. It's fine. Saffron apparently looks something like this. Yes, this is saffron. This is saffron. This is saffron. This is a whole page about saffron. Saffron, for such an ancient and important spice, saffron is surprisingly difficult to keep alive and much less to harvest. The crocus that we know today as saffron is a triploid. Whoops, that's too far. It's a triploid, meaning that it has three sets of chromosomes instead of the normal two, and it's sterile. It can only reproduce by creating more corms, a bulb-like structure, never by setting seed. It is probably a mutant that has been continuously cultivated since 1500 BC. Ooh. That's kind of cool! Wow, I didn't realize that! So that's the cool thing about sterile plants. They can't produce seeds, which means you have to basically clone them by some other ways, or like grafting and stuff like that. Maybe that's why saffron is so freaking expensive. Um, they say in here that naturally, uh, the colors, the yellow ver saffron is present in a couple of different uh, liqueurs. One such is yellow and green chartreuse-like liqueurs made in Sp Spain, France, and Italy. Benedictine discloses very few of the ingredients, but admit to the inclusion of saffron. So Benedictine also makes its appearance um, in saffron, flop, flop that. And then Fernet Branca, it's a popular rumor that much of Fernet Branca derives its flavor from saffron. And in fact, it commands three quarters of the world's saffron supply. Supposedly, this may be nothing more than a tall tale. If annual production of the spirit is 3.85 million cases as reported in liquor industry trade journals, that would work out to one sixth of an ounce of saffron per bottle, roughly $25 worth at retail. With a bottle of Fernet retailing for 20 to $30, it seems unlikely that it would contain such a large and expensive pinch of the spice, even with massive volume discounts. So, is saffron in Fernet Branca? I don't know. That's for the experts to disclose. And for the people who guard the secret recipe to never disclose. There's a couple other ones in here as well. Some notable ones being, we have eucalyptus. That actually makes sense. So if eucalyptus is supposedly in here, right? I think I do have a note on that somewhere. It says, it is used in bitters, vermouth, and gin. Fernet Branca, in, in particular, is known for its powerful eucalyptus flavor. That means that the eucalyptus, I actually have some eucalyptus oil that sits on my desk, and it does have a very, very menthol smell to it. I am not surprised to know and to find out that eucalyptus, I definitely taste eucalyptus in there. Not necessarily mint, certainly not peppermint, because that's in the Branca Menta, as it seems. We also have an ingredient called Maubi. A, a member of the buckthorn family. I don't know what Malby is. Malby. Malby. Visitors to the Caribbean, particularly around Trinidad and Barbados, may have encountered Malby, a strangely sweet and bitter syrup made from the bark of two trees, Colo Calubrina arborescens and C. elliptica. The recipe varies, but it usually involves mixing some tree bark with sugar and water and some combination of cinnamon, allspite, nuts, nutmeg, vanilla, citrus peel, bay leaf, star anise, and fennel seed, giving a spicy, licorice kick poured into plain soda water. Malby syrup is traditionally been considered a sort of cure-all. Very, very interesting. I have no idea what Malby is, uh, but if I remember making my way down to the Caribbean, I will note that. So this is from the Caribbean. Caribbean Malby. This is very cool. And I have one more in here. I'm not gonna... We'll get to the cocktail. We'll get to more cocktails in a little bit. We got some history that we gotta cover. 
And also there's pine, as appa uh, apparently it has pine, which kind of makes sense actually. Where does it say the pine there? Pine, 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 pine. Is it so? I don't see Fernet mentioned there. Yes, I do. Where is it? Weird. Well, I definitely uh, wrote that down. Let me check. Let me check. I have my thing in the back. Fernet Branca. Fernet. 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 Fernet says two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah, pine. Supposedly on this page somewhere. Where are you in there? My skimming abilities are failing me. Austrian pine there, ups according to there, something, something. Well, supposedly it makes its appearance in pine. That or maybe it's myrrh? Nah. So pine question mark? We'll put pine up there. Pine question mark. And if it is pine, I've bitten pine needles before. And now that you say pine, I'm inclined to agree. Tamale Johnson says the fennel seed part kind of makes sense. Oh, absolutely. But I would definitely say, like, the uh, whole uh, of Malby, at least. Malby in and fennel seed. The licorice stuff there. Oh, uh, yeah. Fennel, I kind of like. Star anise, I'm not as super familiar with. I've never actually had an any set, which is another type of liqueur out there, which is strongly flavored with star anise. I do have some any spots over here somewhere. I'm, I thought I had, Yes, I do. I have them easily accessible in case we ever so need anus on the bar. I mean, anise. I definitely said that instead. Take a little break to take a little sip here. Finish off my Fernet con Coco. Which, if you're joining in a little later, was the first technical cocktail of our Fernet Branca adventure here. Fernet con Coco can be made in a variety of different ratios. The most popular one, I guess because it's easy to remember, is 50-50 split. 50% Coca-Cola, or your favorite cola brand. And 50% Fernet Branca. Could be Branca Menta. It adds a little bit of a peppery note there. You can do really whatever you want with it. Um... And then there's other different ratios too. Anywhere ranging from a splash of Fernet in your Coca-Cola or a splash of Coca-Cola in your Fernet. It's also most popularly um, combined with coffee. And those other ratios I mentioned, I think the popular ones are 90 to 10, 50, 50, and 70, 30, both ways, I think. But I like me a nice Fernet bronco. Great piece of stuff. I'm in my bucket up here. Oh my gosh. I don't know where my trash bucket is. So um, I'll get that later. It'll become necessary eventually. My Fernet over here, just by itself, has also been sitting a little bit more. And now that we know a couple different other flavors in there, um, aloe's kind of familiar. Juniper comes from, like, gin and stuff. Musk mofo, I don't know what it tastes like. Um, but coffee, eucalyptus, Malby, Malby can be a little... I think if I interpreted that correctly, can be a little licorice -y, a little fennel -y, um, or Or maybe it's supposed to be combined with that stuff. So it might pair well with those flavors. Not so sure. Definitely more muted now. It's not as it's not as bitter as it was not immediately at least and now that i get it actually the pine notes are not really as strong anymore to be honest i don't really know much about saffron in terms of its flavor but i will say that there's a that knowing that it was aged in slovenian oak i don't know exactly what slovenian oak is in terms of flavor combos but oak when i think of oak is usually kind of vanilla-y a little caramelly and maybe that's combining with the coffee notes there to make it seem almost chocolate-esque almost toffee like per chance per chance you're definitely making me want to sip on fernet is it still good though yes i would definitely say it is good if you have access to some fernet put a little on ice put a little in a warm glass i honestly think i i can be a little odd so i don't know if this is like the way the rest of the world enjoys it but i would definitely i can enjoy this on the rocks with something mixed in it or just totally straight totally neat all on its own and i actually kind of like that this is a nice like a it's, it's a sipper it's definitely a sipper i'm gonna make my way through this little cordial glass here at some point so hopefully at this point you've um i guess uh, obtained an appreciation for fernet branca an italian liqueur very popular now in argentina made from at least 40 botanicals including but not limited to aloe and juniper and saffron allegedly pine coffee eucalyptus eucalyptus you name it i don't know we like to do puns around here and we're going to move on so knowing that these are the types of flavors that are imparted into fernet branca and are present present there at least from the more studious crowds of folks who write, write books i'm going to see what else i can actually be used with the idea that this 
complex flavor combination can go well with a couple of different things is it's kind of cool like you know when you have a negroni you have to have campari in there and that's like a very bitter orange type liqueur with a couple other things going on there but it's also got a sweetness to it the fact that campari can be combined with so many different types of mixers and base spirits and otherwise it's, it's kind of like it's kind of mind-blowing that something so complex can create its own kind of special flavor that can be combined in other ways with other things it's kind of amusing and so that's what i kind of wanted to explore for fernet Branca here because it's at least in my bar it's kind of underutilized and i want to change that tamala says love the history lesson i normally sip it neat or do a fernet old-fashioned split with some bourbon that sounds awesome Ooh, is uh for your old-fashioned do you like kind of change up the like the different like um I think citrus in there. I I want to. I I mix up in the old fashions every once in a while. So I forgive me if I'm wrong. The old fashions a little bit of you can add a little bit of sugar cube in there or simple syrup. Your bourbon. You could put fernet in there, I suppose. And then like your instead of like an Angostura bitter, you could use the fernet instead. I'm trying to like conceptualize. If I'm incorrect, please swiftly correct me. But we got some other fernet branca recipes on this board, and we will move on and take a look at those. I need my. I need a towel to erase this thing I have up on the board. And I told myself that I had a lot of towels over here, um, and I found one. Here we go, and I will erase that. We're not doing Fernet Coke Coca anymore. If you wanna know how to make a Fernet Coke Coca, take some Fernet and caught it with Coca. That is how it do. It is how it do. We move on to another recipe. What is that recipe? Well, well, ladies germs, and those who fall in between or beyond, we are gonna find out by going to the cocktail randomizer! No, just kidding. I don't randomize the cocktails. Although, one day I'd like to. Next on my list here, there's a couple of different ones, and I don't exactly know which ones we want to get to. Let's do something a little, a little more complex than just two spirits together. Let's do one that I found on the internet. Nah, we'll do one from one of these books over here, because I actually have the books here, and if I, if I did not utilize them, that would be embarrassing. From this book here, I have called 1001 Cocktails, 1001, Re 1001 Recipes for the Perfect Drink. I literally found this book on the side of the road. It was the world, it was the universe calling out to me, like, you need a drink. I was like, yes, yes, I do. On page 117 of this lexicon, there is a book, there is a, a recipe here called The Wake Up Call. And The Wake Up Call uses Fernet Branca and orange juice. And it looks a little something, supposedly, like this. This one right smack in the middle. They say The Wake Up Call is very refreshing and revitalizing any time of the day and not just for hangovers. The cure to hangovers is to drink more alcohol, according to pretty much every single book out there I've read, except for like the more like, I guess kind of like, um, like home, like, like, uh, alternative medicine type books, like The Drunken Bot. I don't know if I've seen anything considered a hangover cure in The Drunken Botanist yet, but maybe it's hiding somewhere in there somewhere. Um, to create a wake-up call, you need to stir two ingredients over ice in a medium glass eye glass. I thought we were going to get a little more... I we were gonna get a little, okay, well, by that logic, apparently the Californians will take their Fernet Branca and combine it with ginger ale, and now there's a couple of different ways to do it, so we're just gonna do it. It says stir the two first ingredients over ice, medium-sized glass, top with soda water to taste. I got some soda water and stuff. Here. Let's go for that. Tamale Johnson says it's a bit intense on the flavor, but his holiday old-fashioned this year was an ounce of bourbon, an ounce of Fernet, quarter of an ounce of rich simple syrup and two dashes of almond bitters orange zest and syrup that sounds delightful i'm gonna take a picture of that i like that recipe that is a very fine looking recipe i'm always trying to find ways to like kind of change up the different like base cocktails that you're familiar with for the folks across the pond who may not know what ounces are that's about 30 ounces of the bur whoa i lost it 30 ounces of the bourbon i'm sorry 30 milliliters of the bourbon 30 milliliters of the fernet about um seven mil uh, ooh, like Two millimeters? Milliliters? Wait, one is 30. Divided by two. 15. Seven. Seven milliliters of the rich simple syrup. And then two dashes of almond bitters. The rich simple syrup, I assume, is just a higher percentage of sugar to the water that you combine with. Usually you can do like a one-to-one, -one, but you can you can go wild with it. Maybe three to one for something super duper rich. In any case, so apparently there's a couple different ways that you can make ferment with things. And the other alternatives are with orange juice, which is on one side of the spectrum, coffee, which is on the other side of the spectrum, and then I guess somewhere in the middle is your Coca-Cola and ginger ale as well. I have some ginger ale and I have some oranges that we can squeeze here, and I'm kind of curious what the difference are here. According to this cocktail recipe, you're supposed to stir it. I'm just gonna build it in a glass. I'm a little lazy, so that's what we're gonna do. The next recipe that we're using is called the Wake Up Call, and I had a marker around here that I was using, and I misplaced it. Did I put it down here? I have no idea where that went. 
I'm gonna use this one. Wake up call. This is a large marker. My goodness. Wake. Wake me up. Wake me up inside. Can't wake up. Wake me up inside. <laughs> save me. Call my name and save me from the dark. I need some oranges. I have oranges. I got those oranges over here. I'm gonna need something to cut those oranges off. Uh -huh. I have a cutting board, wonderful. I am gonna need something to cut those oranges with. I have a knife, which I'm not gonna stab into my bar. I almost did so, unconsciously. And we're also gonna need some ginger ale. I got these tiny little ginger ale potatoes over here. Um, the brand that I happen to have stocked is Seagram's. They also make a nice uh, whiskey, I believe. We're also gonna need a couple of different glasses here. I'm gonna wind up building it. So what I'll do is I'll juice the orange first. I'll get my glasses, we'll prepare them, and we'll fill them on up. It says half measure in the book. Half measure of each, which depending on what you're measuring with could be 15 milliliters or half an ounce or otherwise, we're just gonna do equal parts. I'm gonna do, we'll do an ounce of each. Just makes sense. We'll wind up, this is good stuff. With the Fernet combinations, I feel like we can combine them all together and it'll still taste like a cocktail. So that's the assumption that I'm gonna go off of. We'll put them in two matching glasses. Eh, we'll do the we'll do the juicage first. So if I need an ounce of orange juice, uh, I'll probably just only need the one. We'll see. Cut it on the cutting board, he says. To juice an orange, it's actually quite simple. Take the orange, separate it from itself, and juice it. You can use your fingers if you want to. If you have one of those cool like like lemon juicer things where you like, eek, you could do that. Um, but I have this thing, and I hate this thing. I hate this thing so much. For in terms of an orange juicer, this thing is terrible. Not because like you have to do like the spinning motion here, but because the pouring spout on it is just terrible, and it doesn't work. The seal on it is not good. It like spills out the side when I'm trying to like make a nice pour. It sucks. I got it from Whole Foods. Bezos does not know how to juice an orange, although they make pretty damn good. Actually, no, 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 no. I take that back. I bought this lemon squeezer from Whole Foods too, and I think it also sucks. I like the one that I picked up on Amazon, which again is not as, not farther away from Amazon, I guess, centrically as a company, but whoever I sourced it from on Amazon, they know their lemon juicers. If it's got a divot in the bottom, don't use the divot. Just, it just, it's not good, it's not good. At least in my, in my humble opinion. And I'm basically a nobody on the internet, which means my opinions are resounding off the walls of this Grand Canyon that I sit at the bottom of. Um, if there were so many people, if I were large, there'd be no canyon, and if there were too many people, then nobody would hear me. Philosophy. Once you've eviscerated your orange, give it a bite. Or something. Now, I'm just gonna put it over here. In my spare glass. I don't have my, I don't have my trash bucket up here, so it's not gonna go into a bucket this time. It's gonna go otherwise. I apparently need about an ounce. I'm gonna use, I was using sub, sub ounces, like small ounces. This is 25 milliliters in this particular measuring majigger here. So it's gonna be 25 milliliters or about an ounce of orange juice from one of those things. And hopefully I don't make a mess. Please don't make a mess. Is it? No, it's making a mess. I hate it. I hate it so much. And but well, we got 25 milliliters. And I never want to do it again. I hate that thing so much. In any case, I have that prepared. I'm putting this away. I don't want to see it anymore. Oh, out of my sight. Get it out of here. I'm gonna need some glasses. Let's take two matching glasses. I'm gonna take these guys right here. These are, were a gift from a buddy of mine. They've got little dice on them because I love to play tabletop board games. But with my friends, I'm not very much alone. I don't like to be alone. I'm gonna take some small ice cubes that I have over here because it's a little bit of a bother to take the big ice cubes and chisel them down so they fit in the glass. Um, well, actually, actually, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have some spherical ice cubes which fit actually quite well here. I'm gonna use those instead. Yeah, all right. They're not exactly spherical. They wind up coming out more like saucers and stuff, but if you throw them hard enough into the glass, they kind of get spherical. Oh, hear that crackle. I love the way that sounds. I do have to crack it up a little bit. These are my my Saturn balls of ice, my Saturn balls. And if you drop them with enough force or just like just drop them in general, they will make their way to the bottom of the glass and more or less retain their spherical structure. There we go. And I didn't break any glasses. Just breaking some ice. At least I wasn't breaking wind. And even if I did, nobody would notice. 
You'd be none the wiser if I did, and unless it was noticeable, in which case, I'm so sorry, everybody. So I need, apparently, equal parts of a couple of these different things. I'm gonna put my, supposedly, you can take your cheaper ingredients and put them in first, which would be my orange juice and my ginger ale, and put your more expensive stuff there. But like technically, things that have alcohol in there can be, because of the alcohol content, can be lighter than the ingredients that don't have alcohol in them. So you put the alcohol on the bottom so it kind of mixes itself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the, the, the mixers in first because I already filled up one of my jiggers with um, orange juice. We'll do that there. I don't want the orange juice to be infected, uh, or rather infecting the ginger ale. Fill it off some, with some water, make it clean it off a little bit. Not with the marker cloth, a different cloth indeed. Then take some Seagram's, nice. And then take about 25 milliliters, about an ounce of that, and you get other one. And we'll be mixing with equal parts. Technically the wake up call recipe um, is the one that uses the orange juice. And the one that, I guess the one that uses the ginger ale, the one book said it was, it was Californian? It's actually Fernet and ginger ale, according to the internet. Fernet and ginger beer. Oh, Fernet and ginger beer. Uh, could be ginger ale, ginger beer, I guess. Interesting. The Italian mule cocktail with Fernet and ginger beer? No. Moscow mule riz? No, that's not really what I'm looking for. A cantina band? No, these are completely different. Fernet buck? Is that what they're calling it? A Fernet buck? Fernet branca, lime juice, angostura, ginger beer. No, okay. Oh, I don't. I guess that's just a Californian thing. I don't know, a past me said it. We'll believe, we'll believe them. And then we'll take a little bit of equal parts of those for net and we'll just pop it into both of them. Wake up call and something that the Californians do if I quoted that correctly. Let's do about an ounce of each of them. Ah, I'm kind of spilling, it's fine. That's why I should be pouring this over top of the glass. So if I spill the expensive ingredient, it goes into the glass and makes me more happy. There we go, that's fine. Don't waste it, says Anna. Don't waste it. Dearest, can I ask you a favor? Could you find my bucket? I don't know where my bucket is, and I have nothing to put the trash into except for more glasses. Oh, I know where to put it. All right, wake up call on this side. This has orange juice, and this one on this side has ginger ale in it, which, what did it say? It was, I gotta check it. Fact check myself. It was, Going to this book. Wow, I put the bookmark in just the wrong place. I'm gonna give myself a paper cut over here. Hoody doody doody do. California. It's California. I'm not going back to look at that again. And I found my bucket. Yay! You left it near the washer. I left it near the washer. This is my bucket. I use it to put the stuff in after the stream ends, but okay, it makes we'll cleanup easier. To the everybody say hi to the bucket. Say hi, bucket. Hi, bucket. Everybody say hi to the Cameron. Hi, Cameron. Cameron does not wave back. Wake up call, equal parts, orange juice, and otherwise, you can actually top this off with soda water. I do remember it saying that, so let's grab some soda water. Um, I have some containers down here. Where are you? Club soda. I'm following the instructions for this one, and then following other instructions or recommendations for the other one. Well, actually, let's see how it tastes on its own, and then we'll do it. It's true, he doesn't wave back. I never do. That's interesting. So this is a wake-up call with no club soda in it. It's equal parts for net branca and orange juice. Two-step just walked in. What's up, bro? Drinking some weird stuff here. You ever, like... You know how you're, like, not supposed to brush your teeth and then drink orange juice? I thought maybe it was because of, like, the fluoride content in toothpaste because perhaps the fluoride reacts with the acid and makes something taste weird, but, like... The eucalyptus -y, minty notes of Fernet Branca and the orange juice are confusing me. Like, I feel like I don't want this. It's kind of just sour, bitter, and minty. I should be adding club soda. Let me add club soda to it. That's what I'm supposed to do. Oh my goodness. Two Step says, they're doing good, which is a wonderful thing. We like that. Um, I got back from a conference. The conference was amazing, by the way. I went to CES. It was 
fucking incredible. Oh my god. Um, and then I got COVID on my way back, so here we are. But I recently went a little viral the other week for freezing about it, about it with Hennessy. I wanted you to check it out. Oh, what is this stuff? Oh, what is this? What do we got here? Oh, let's check this stuff out. Our bro two step went viral. We we appreciate we uh, celebrate things like that. If I go to my channel. Uh, no no no. I go to the live menu. Stream manager. Here we are. Where's the? Ugh, oh my goodness. Okay, I guess I gotta. Uh, I wanted to be in my chat. Ah, my goodness. Send the link again. I have my chat thing ready. You have my full permission to send that link one more time. It's not spamming. Uh, it's just so I can access it on my mobile phone. I don't have a way to like easily share links across it. I need to set that up properly. This is a wake-up call. It's been diluted now with some club soda and water-ish stuff. I hit 1.2 million. I would like you to give your opinion on the liquor in the video. Oh my goodness. If you can send the link again so it pops up in my chat on my mobile, then I can actually click on it and pull up the, the TikTok and everybody can hear the audio and stuff because uh, my computer doesn't support the, the t -t TikTok. I don't want to... This, this thing here is like bezeling out because the lithium ion battery is swelling and I'm trying not to push my limits with it. There it is. Confirm. I would love to. Bro and viral. Yes, you can open it in TikTok. I've given you permission to do that. Waiting to find another bottle like this. Y'all purchase Hennessy. Frozen solid. It's solid. Because this shit ain't real. This ain't that he is. It's actually solid in there. Solid. And my beautiful boss. Solid. Solid Hennessy. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that do say, do say look okay. Oh, oh, but there's other stuff. Okay, okay. Look at this, this, this. One. The Hennessy froze. Why would the Hennessy freeze? It's got so much alcohol in it. Always this. Not a minute, ain't crack. Oh my God! Wow, that's so incredible. The fact that it doesn't break the bottle is like, is like equally astounding. Because, so, if there's a bunch of water in it, right, water expands when it freezes. And there was a little bit of liquid still left in that bottle, but, like, it was mostly frozen in there. It wasn't like there was much room for things to move around. And the fact that it didn't crack the bottle makes me think that the bottle itself is prepped for the expansion. Or there wasn't a lot of water freezing there, so it wasn't necessarily the water that was freezing there. There might have been something else. There are, other, there are many other materials out there that freeze, including water. That is concerning and i'm sure there are a lot of people out there who are very very unhappy to find that hennessy froze when you put it in the freezer that's scary i wouldn't expect any of my things to freeze putting that you ever have vodka like ice pops that's wild do you think do i think it's fake i'm inclined to think that it's fake because again like uh something like hennessy it's a base spirit so it's got a hefty amount of alcohol in it that freezing shocks me so i'm inclined to think that it's fake but I want to say that I trust you, but technically speaking, we're all just strangers on the internet, so... <laughs> it is fake? You've got a lot of hate? Oh my god, that's why it blew up so much! That's okay, that's okay. I keep seeing this one guy who pops up- actually, you know, hold on for a second. This is palatable now. With the club soda, it's not actually that bad. The orange juice is pretty much lost on me, though. Wake up call. Not that bad. Not that bad. And then the ginger, ginger ale. The ginger ale thing. Yeah. There's this, this account that keeps popping up in like my YouTube shorts feed where it's this dude who's just been like trolling various parts of the internet. He's like, yeah, I made like a fake like state of Florida account page or I made this fake business page and attracted a lot of attention and stuff or I made a fake Walmart Facebook page and was like being shitty to the people online. And I was like, I know like that kind of content because the whole like it feels very negative but like it is kind of funny it is kind of funny you know crazy for real for real but why why their boss two-step had a video he said we're not allowed to keep no more cold liquor so you couldn't do an update i think it was a fake bottle i think it was a fake bottle of hennessy interesting oh interesting interesting like the bottle of hennessy was fake it could that's actually ooh, that is very true it could actually just be fake itself who knew I feel like your boss would be the most angry person there because to think that whoever's given them the Hennessy is apparently giving them the fake stuff? Ooh! That's spicy, my god! <laughs> Quick diversion. This is for Net Bronco, but it's mixed equally with ginger ale. It's supposed to be popular in California. Light. I don't think the ginger ale is really imparting a lot of flavor. It's almost, oh, you know what? It's actually almost bubblegummy. Whoa, okay. 
the ginger, the, the sweet ginger notes there from the Seagrams. I got a hint of bubblegum there for a minute. I can understand why the Californians like this. Absolutely. Wow. I like that. I don't want to dwell on that too much. I want to move on to more, more, I say more satisfying cocktails because they're just more complicated. They're not necessarily better cocktails. They're just more complicated. This is a wake up call made by mixing equal parts of orange juice and Fernet Branca and topping it off with club soda. You could do it without the club soda, but I wasn't a big fan of it. And there is a California favorite, which remains unnamed from my perspective, where you combine equal parts Fernet Branca and ginger ale together. You could probably top it off with more ginger ale. Maybe it'll taste a little bit. Actually, I'm, I'm very curious about that because I actually do really like the bubblegum notes. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. Fernet and ginger ale? Let's call that, let's call that a 60, 60, 40, 65, 35, 65, 35. I like that. I really, really like that. Man, that's good. I'm going to keep that near me, actually. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, folks. Anyways, there are many, many different ways. I think suffice to say, if you can mix Fernet with your coffee and with your orange juice and with your ginger ale and with your Coca-Cola, you can probably mix your Fernet with a bunch of different things. Case closed. So we've discovered that. We move on to different cocktails. Different cocktails indeed. What kind of different cocktails? I took from this book already. I'm gonna move it to this side. I don't think I'm gonna move, use that one again. I stacked them on top of my, ooh, I have a water dispenser over there. I should probably be drinking water. Stay hydrated, everybody. I, I often forget, but sometimes I remind myself. That's why they like, they, that's why Twitch gives you the whole like hydrate thing is to remind your streamers to hydrate. And the fact that I don't see a lot of hydrations or consumptions on this channel when we're behind the bar is concerning. Either y'all are plotting against me or you're just as forgetful as I am, in which case, I'm so sorry. I know how you feel. Cheers. Water. I make a small little mess of myself over here because I just love, oh, I love hydration. So we move on to a different recipe. I'm not quite ready to touch that book there, but I found this other recipe online called Fan, Fan Chuli. It's, it's spelled, well, I'll put it up on the board and then we can try to pronounce it together. Ooh, excuse me. That was a dastardly, dastardly flavor. F A N C I. Let's see. F A N C I U L L I. Can we still see all those letters? That we can. It's called Fanchuli, potentially. I don't exactly know how to pronounce that. Bloated Dead Rat says, Kimmy, how you doing? I'm still testing positive for COVID-19. Please don't come anywhere near me or let me approach your office. Um, but that was as of this morning and I feel I feel pretty good for like the past like three or four days. I was really, really bad on Tuesday and Wednesday, which is why there was no cocktail stream last week. It wasn't anything crazy anyway. There wasn't even gonna be any any planned recipes. It would have been quite kind of embarrassing, yeah, sir. Whoa, whoa, that was two steps thing. Um. I need a pronouncer to pronounce this word for me. Fancioli. Fancioli is a cocktail, according to the internet. That makes sense. Whiskey, sweet vermouth, and fermented bronca. Is that what we have here? Bourbon or rye? Whiskey, sweet vermouth, fermented bronca. That's what we're making here. It's a, it's a well known thing. Uh, but I need to know how to pronounce it. Fan. Pronunciation. Give it to me, Google. Pronounce it in Italian. A female from Italy is going to say fancioli. I'm gonna guess it's fanciulli. I've been taking some lessons from my coworker. Fanciulli. Ah, the ch. Fanciulli. Fanciulli, which directly translates to. So much. Gosh, I wish my Italian coworker were here to translate for me. Children, according to Google, I'm gonna drink children. If you're under the age of majority in your local municipality, don't drink alcohol. Just, just, just like, don't do it. Just wait. It's worth it. I promise. But it's like, I had it in the last November. Ugh. It was like having a really, really bad cold with extra steps. Glad you're doing well. Oh, for sure. So like when I get COVID, 
which has happened twice now. My my joints ache. Like I'm sick, but not only do I ha I'm like spitting up things, I'm coughing, I my, my reflux is on fire, but also like my joints ache. And like I didn't realize for like two days, I like, kind of had like a scratchy throat. I was kind of hoarse, and I was like I was laying in bed motionless, and I was like, why does it hurt to get up? Why does it hurt to sit down and lay down? I was like, oh my god, I need to take a, take a COVID test, and I did, and I, I came up, like, you know, if you take the two-line tests, and the first line just comes up immediately, you know. This morning, it took a really, really long time for it to get there, so I'm pretty sure I'll be good by Friday when I take my next test, but it's on its way out. Uh, but I went to a pretty kick-ass conference because, um, to, to be able to experience it, so I'm down with it. Put that over there. I'm going to use my other majigger for the rest of this. So to create a fanchuli, which is a cocktail using bourbon, sweet vermouth, and fernet branca. Whenever I see sweet vermouth and whiskey together, I think to myself of a, I think the Boulevard, the, if I'm correct in saying, the Boulevardier is a Negroni, except you swap out the gin with whiskey. And this feels very Boulevardier. -y. Yes. Um, however, it's not in equal parts. So you actually change up the, the, the proportions a little bit. So we'll cover that now. To create it, you need to pour everything together, uh, put it in a mixing glass and stir. So it is a mixed drink and you strain it out into a cocktail glass and then you serve it. So we shall begin. I have a mixing apparatus over here. I'm gonna grab myself a nice little ice cube from my fridge and we'll get things going. Get things going indeed. I don't have very good, I don't have really good like ice popping form. Uh, no apologies there. It's just my, it's just my, spe my special mixing sauce is, uh, is the way that I pop ice out of their silicon molds. <laughs> Shot of whiskey always cures what ails you. It always does. It always does. You know, technically hangovers can be cured by just drinking more alcohol. <laughs> he says as he chugs vodka. <sighs> just kidding it was water i promise so we're gonna need to add about an ounce and a half or about 44 44 milliliters i did that right an ounce and a half or about 44 milliliters of bourbon or rye according to this uh this one here and this came from seriouseats.com i'm sure it's probably present in one of my other books over here i don't really feel like going searching and like it says bourbon or rye so you could use a bourbon or rye and if this is supposed to be like um oh actually no, did I have any notes on this one? I'm just going to open it up in a tab. I want to see what Serious Eats says about this cocktail. Because I'm go if I'm going to take it from the internet, I should at least see what the author had to say. The Fanchuli cocktail recipe was featured in an article on Serious Eats by Michael Deitch. Uh, it has one comment on it, but it says, The origins of the Fanchuli cocktail are somewhat dim, but the flavor certainly isn't. It's a Manhattan, it's a Manhattan with a bitter menthol backbone. Huh. Evidently it is. I, I, you know what? Technically, it is. It totally is. The drink first appears in the 1931 book Old Waldorf Old Baller Days by Albert Stevens Croquettes, and Mr. Croquette says that the name is Italian slang for the boys or children, evidently. Crockett traces the cocktail to no later than 1910, however, and as Eric Felton showed in his Wall Street Journal column a few years ago, the Fanchuli may have been named for a music composer of the same renown, of some renown. The original recipe calls for bourbon, fry works too, but whichever you choose, pick a strong whiskey, something that will stand up to the fernet. They would go with a bullet, uh, a bullet, or wild turkey 101 if you're choosing bourbon. As for the vermouth, Felton suggests something with backbone, like a via or a punta mez, he recommends. I only have a uh, Cochi Americano. So that's what we're going to use. He was writing before Carpano Antico was fairly widely available, so he would, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. What's his face? Deech. Mr. Deech suggests that as well. You'll certainly want something a little punchier than your standard sweet vermouths in this particular ingredient here. Oh, Two Step says, what would be a good drink for you to try till you can impress someone for their birthday? So once upon a time, my fiance turned 21 and i made for this was very very early in my cocktail mixing days i'm gonna grab my ingredients while i describe this um, we need bourbon i'm gonna take my mystery bourbon that i have here sweet vermouth and fernet i have the fernet i just need sweet vermouth in any case i wanted to impress my then girlfriend with a fancy cocktail from a book themed on alice in wonderland she's a huge huge disney buff and i thought this is gonna be perfect and so i went to the collection and i searched for where's my oh there's my 
And so I searched for a recipe. Um, it's called a cake batter martini. And it uses some very, very, I don't remember what the proportions are off the top of my head, but it uses like infused cake batter vodka, where you essentially take buttercream and lemon zest and vanilla pod and put it into some Everclear, cut it down by half and mix it with some other stuff. Um, I would not recommend that. Um, it depends on really who you're trying to have a birthday for. If it's somebody who, let's say, is more into sweeter drinks, personally, I really like, uh, pina coladas are so good. I love them. And if you whip out the blender, like that could be that could be pretty impressive, I would think. Um, if they're more into like short cocktails, I discovered the other day a recipe called the Old Pal, and it combines in equal parts uh, whiskey, dry vermouth, and Campari. And I would highly recommend that to somebody who, let's say, might might already be familiar with classic cocktails. I really, really liked it. And I poured one for myself the other day and I made it a double and I whew, that was hitting me. I don't really know all. I, all I can say is they're drunk or they like to drink. I don't know. Oh, you like something, something, something drinky? <laughs> something with tequila in it. For some reason, everybody that I know that really, really likes to drink is a huge fan of tequila for some reason. And so, if they like tequila and mint, I could suggest a mockingbird, which uses tequila and mint and lime juice. It's actually really good. It's kind of like a minty, a minty margarita. You could probably add some crushed ice in there. You could do it up like a margarita. I'm sure people would really appreciate that. Those would be my suggestions. Uh, I'm about to add an ounce and a half or about 44 milliliters of bourbon, whiskey. I don't really know what's in this container. I just know that it's bourbon and or whiskey. This is my um, this is my everything bourbon container. Every time you remove from the everything the Millennium container, you're supposed to add to it. I have not been following the rule um, because the only bourbon I have left is um. I'm sorry, the only whiskey that I have le left is the Rittenhouse uh, Bottled and Bond and really good stuff, and I really don't want to combine it with the other stuff just yet. I'm not ready. I am due for a little trip to the liquor store, and eventually I will get there. Sweet vermouth, we're going to add three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of. I have a Copana Antica. You could use it if you want to. Apparently they say a Via or a uh, Punta Mez would also be useful here. I can do three quarters of an ounce. Three quarters of an ounce. And we're going to stir this, by the way, if it wasn't already um, obvious there. And it's gone fanchuli. Fanchuli. Slang for the boys, a.k.a. or the children, according to Google. I don't know who it was that I was um, watching the other day, but they had a phrase. It was, um, oh, it was another Twitch streamer. Gosh, I don't remember what their name was. My goodness. But they said the most important thing about cooking or recipes and stuff like that is to clean as you go. Put your stuff away so you don't have this mass to clean later. And that's why we have the glory bucket. That's why we have it. And the last thing you're going to need is a quarter of an ounce of Fernet Branca or about seven, seven and a half milliliters for those across the pond. Bloated says, try looking up mixed drinks that focus on sake. Not, not, may, not may have tried it. Uh, it's a bit of a favorite of uh, Bloated's. Also has a mild vodka taste, rice wine. I love sake drinks. And actually, before I started... Um, the whole bar segment that we have here. Before, like, I really started digging deep into the cocktails on stream here, I was looking all over the place for a sake cocktail, and I actually have one that I made myself. It's not technically balanced, but it is a sake and white chocolate um, martini, basically. And if you're interested in the recipe, it's it's um it's it's a little boozy, um, but not as boozy as would be like let's say a vodka based martini. Um, I'll I'll share it if you're interested. I, I'd be happy to share that recipe. It was something oh actually and i made i did that one and there was also one i don't know if they're in a tea but if they are you could do one i have another recipe that uses matcha as well it's really not balanced and it's got a really odd bitterness to it it definitely needs to be worked out in my free time um but i just haven't had that because i'm a busy busy boy in any case we've added to our glass uh, an ounce and a half or about 44 milliliters of bourbon rye whiskey it can be really really whatever you want it to be uh we added three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of sweet vermouth i used a carpano antica there's also recommended via i think it was called and a punct de mez and I, there's also a quarter of an ounce or about seven milliliters of our fernet branca in there we're gonna stir this thing I got a new stirring spoon while I was up in Vermont the other day. You might not be able to see, but it is black graphite, and it kind of blends in with the um, this thing, the blackboard behind me. Stir that for about eight seconds or so. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've been working on my stirring technique. It's okay. Ooh, that, mm, I like that so far. I missed the bucket completely there, my goodness. 
Such utter nonsense. How are you? Cloudy Saki is delightful. Oh my goodness. I believe a Nigori, I believe, is what you refer to as Cloudy Saki. I'm not exactly sure, but there is a cloudy bottle of sake that has been sitting downstairs in the refrigerator. And oh, it's so good. The wonderful thing about sake is sake does a wonderful thing. You can serve it cold, you can serve it warm, you can have it at room temperature, you can take it right out of wherever you're restoring it, and it's still wonderful. I love sake. And I would recommend any, if anybody's got sake recipes out there, please send them my way. Um, I would love to love to try them. Oh my God, I love sake. All right, we're gonna pop a strainer on this and I'm gonna put it into a coupe glass. So that's what we got there. I'm gonna do a little bit of the zoom here. Try to see if we can get some nice colors here. It's, it's brown, do we, do we need to? I don't think we need to. It's not supposed to be garnished with anything. You just serve it neat. There we go, right up like that. So easy to do. I'm trying to figure out the best way to strain this thing. Here we go. I've never actually used this julep strainer, which is also new. I've never actually used it. So, I tried my best. And here we are. Otter Nonsense's go-to is mixing it with plum wine. Oh my god! <laughs> By chance! Every time I think of plum wine... I think of this stuff. Fuki? Is it Fuki? Because Fuki is just... fucking amazing. Oh my god. And it goes totally well with, um, well, I'm with it. Because it's... I don't even know if the base of Fuki is. It's, it's this one. I don't know if the base of it is rice wine. I'm not sure what the base of the spirit is. It's made with ripe, perfectly flavored plums, picked and bottled. They're high flavor for delicious to your taste. Why making process with plums instead of flavor? I don't know. It's so freaking good. And if that's not the one that you're referring to, get some Fuki in your life. Beautiful. Yes, of course. Of course it's the one. It's so prolific. You can find like every Asian restaurant. If Asian restaurants are serving, if they're serving cocktails, they're gonna have plum wine and it's gonna be fuki, at least in my particular uh, area. And I am happy with it because it's good every single time. This is a fanchuli. It's slang for the, the boys or the children. And it was made by either in, uh, either in reference to a composer of the same name or what was the other history there? I have it right here. Or it was also in a book in the 1930s. So we get some, some of these Fernet cocktails are coming back from a couple of different areas. And they're interesting. Some, somebody, no later than 1910. Fernet itself was made in 18, I think it was 1835. So Fernet has had like a whole world of consumption. And it has come across in a couple of different iterations. Actually kind of cool. Fanciulli. Um, how do you say cheers in Italian? Nastirobia, I don't know. Ooh. Pick that apart a little bit. That's really nice. So the Fernet is not... It's not in your face. It's really, really well balanced. So the first thing that I get there, I was a little distracted for a moment but the whiskey notes pop up. The whiskey is not unpleasant at all. It's not really biting. And again, I don't know exactly what kind of whiskey it is. I think for the most part, the whiskey that's in that bottle is Old Grandad, I believe, which I'm not usually a big fan of. Some have called Old Grandad kind of peanutty and vanilla-y. I'm not usually a big fan of it, but like, I really like its place in this cocktail. I'm actually completely rethinking my whole Millennium whiskey bottle there. Because that's good. The next thing I got was the vermouth in there. Carpano Antica, to me, is a little bumblegummy. It's got some cherry notes to it. It's got some vanilla notes to it. It's very, very tasty, especially in your Manhattans and whatnot. Um, and to be honest, that bottle has been in there for a little longer than I usually want it to be. And I remember I kind of left it out. So it's not going to be as fresh as it, had, as it was when we bought it for the Thankmas stream like a month ago. Um, almost exactly a month. No, no, no. When was that? Almost, almost exactly a month ago. Incredible. Um, but that was that was cool. And we did a whole exploration too with one of my um one of my one of my buddies, um, Eric, who was on here. This is wonderfully balanced. I would say like it's kind of the Fernet. The 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 person who wrote the article, Deech, said a Fernet backbone, like a like a mentally bitter backbone, and I get that here. It's almost like the bitterness there is alike to a Campari, but it's not as sweet. 
instead of the sweetness of a Campari, the citrus notes of a Campari, you're getting something different. You're getting more chocolatey notes. You're getting like deeper notes. Notes that instead of existing in a very sweet, light, almost sour area, it's existing in a very deep, robust, like kind of heavy area, if that makes sense at all. And it's very, very nice. And it reminds me a lot of a Manhattan, but like elevated in a way because of that bitterness. Although to be honest, like if this were supposed to be, like if I was properly comparing this to a Manhattan, I should probably use it with a whiskey that I usually make my Manhattans with. I don't usually make myself Manhattans. I'm more of a Negroni person because I love gin. But if I had to make the Manhattan, I think the last Manhattan I had was probably the Rittenhouse Bottle and Bond. And I probably could have used that. Missed opportunities. But it's tasty. I would highly recommend it. It's more of a short. It's more of a short drink, so it's kind of. It's got. A, it's much more boozy. It tastes more classic. It's not very sweet. Um, if you like to taste your alcohol like I do, this would be a recommendation. So essentially, what's the takeaway? What's the takeaway from this? It's salud. Duh. Of course, it's salud. Of course, I hear that in my family. I. I you may not believe it. But I come from a predominantly Italian family, and I feel like only when I am tasked with recalling the information of Italian culture do I all of a sudden forget it. It's, it's incredible. And uh, comparatively, I am much less Italian than my one coworker of mine who enjoys to uh, share with us, like, Italianness. And of course, I'm like, yes, please teach me Italian, man. Tell me how to pronounce my exploding value, uh, my exploding double consonants and stuff. It's kind of fun. But this is really, really good. I think... If you're a fan of the way that the Fernet Branca tastes on its own, this is a nice way to modify it. Add a different direction to it. Add add some more fruit. You know what? You know what? I don't find that there's a lot of fruity notes to Fernet Branca, but if you want something more fruity, combine it with the sweet vermouth. The sweet vermouth might be a little too acetic, especially if it's been sitting around for a while, so the whiskey actually kind of does a really good job there of balancing out the, let's say, imperfections in the vermouth, if you will. It's really good. Change the G, the D to a T. Salute, salute. Ooh, saluti, saluti. Because I, I didn't notice the I at the end. I missed that. Thank you. Saluti, saluti, fanciulli, my paisans. Very, very cool. I like that. I really like that. That's a nice. That is a really, really nice use for Fernet Branca. Um, but I had, I had a thought, and the thought was, you can take any place where you would add let's say a campari or some other like bitter aperitif uh or like a uh, or like um a bitters obviously and you can swap it out with fernet and it would probably go really well there it seems to go really really well with a couple of different things which is awesome it was really really good Whew. that was wonderful so far my goodness that was great all right i'm gonna put this but do i like it better than this californian thing that'll be made the ice has begun to melt it's kind of watered down i'm gonna put this back here consumption hey oh put that thing in my mouth what do i have that's what do i <laughs> what do i have over here that's solid <laughs> i had the piece of that orange oh you know what oh i have an apple and this apple is gonna come up in the next cocktail I'm gonna take the sticker. I'm gonna big, take a big old bite. I only need a slice of it. Mm. Thank you, bloated. That's a nice Granny Smith. That's not very sour either. I appreciate you. Thank you. And also, you should drink water too. And fill up. Actually, hold on a second. I got a better water container. I've been drinking out of the same container for the last week or so, so as to keep my covid mouth away from people. And I've been using this stein here that we painted on vacation one time. I honestly think that I shouldn't be drinking water out of literally any other container because this stein is so... Pros it, my guy. Come on. And it also fills up an intense amount of water. One of the problems that I run into in terms of staying hydrated is if the container that I'm drinking out of doesn't 
like like is low on water or whatever i'm like less inclined to drink it because i really don't want to go up and fill it like i just like the the activation energy that's necessary for me to go up and like fill up my water bottle is like it's up here and like i'm usually sitting at like here i'm usually pretty high energy but like compared to that i just haven't reached it yet and if we're talking activation energy you gotta get at least there Comparing Panchuli and just regular Fernet. Fruitier, woodier. The whiskey is prominent, the vermouth is prominent. The Fernet, definitely a bit of a backbone there. Versus the Fernet, which is at room temperature now. Much more bitter. And still kind of the same as it was previously. Kind of kind of toffee like coffee-ish, whatever. It's almost like Fernet on its own right now, after drinking the Fanchuli, kind of tastes just like a an alcoholic coffee. Like if you just added vodka to coffee, that's kind of like suffice to say, aside from like that minty eucalyptus component, that's kind of what Fernet tastes like to me. It's like very like vodka and coffee is, is what I would imagine it to be. That got coffee comparison, I'm really, really getting behind. So let's see. What kind of cocktails have we made so far? We have covered a little bit of the history of Fernet Branca. I got some of my history from a book called Ultimate Guide to Spirits and Cocktails, as well as one called The Drunken Botanist, uh, about the different ingredients that find their way into Fernet Branca, which includes, but is not limited to, Slovenian oak in the barrels, saffron, aloe, juniper, musk milfoil, colombo root, Chinese rhubarb, coffee, eucalyptus, malvi, and pine. Maybe. Uh, there's 40 different botanicals, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're a quarter of the way there, and cracking the coat to be able to make our own Campari. Excuse me. It's been a journey so far. Campari comes from 1835, Milan, Italy. Uh, it had a lot of, a bit of a popular resurgence, not resurgence, it had a popularity boom in like Argentina. So they put another distillery there and they make it in two different locations, one in Milan and one in Argentina, or maybe a couple factories in Milan, Italy, and one in Argentina, because it's just so damn popular there. What's popular in Argentina is your Fernet con Coca, which is Fernet Branca, or Branca Menta, which is a peppermint, it's, a, it's Fernet Branca with more pepper added to it, combined with Coca-Cola. It's also popular in California when mixed with ginger ale in a combination that I don't exactly know the name of. Um, you can also do a bunch of other things with it. You can apparently mix it with orange juice. You can mix it with coffee like the Italians do. Or you can basically sub it out in your uh, next Manhattan, as opposed to your, um, your bitters there, you add your Fernet instead. And you got yourself a whole new cocktail, in this case called Fanchuli, which I got from the internet. Thank you, internet. I'm gonna move on to another cocktail over here. I'm just, there's, there's a couple different more to make. They just That's what we do around here. I guess at this point, I would just like to remind everybody that what I like to do here is make cocktails every Wednesday. I put a little watermark up in the corner because I removed the one that was down here because it was just ugly. It didn't really, didn't really fit the aesthetic and stuff. We changed things up around here. Uh, but my name is Cameron. I spell my name with an X silently. And the bar also has an X in it too. You probably didn't notice because um, it's written in blue marker up there and it's also silent um i also want to say that we have a discord server as well where there's channels for a bunch of different things i like to post the cocktail recipes here if you wind up missing the cocktail recipes there's a youtube channel for vods i don't encourage subscribing to that but just just tune in right here um and there's also a channel where i post i try as best as i can to post all the recipes on as well that's the most up-to-date location for that i like to i want to kind of make things a little more communal uh, kind of my resolution for the year of 2023 is to make more of a community out of this whole thing because to be perfectly honest I had a discovery the other day and I don't know if he's still hanging around but Tamale Johnson I ran into uh, on Sunday of last week where he was doing some tiki bar stuff and I like I, I've I've run into a couple of different like these these twitch tenders on twitch over the past couple months or so to name a few we've got larix we have colino we have tamale johnson there's ender potion there's oh, thistle and oak there's there's a lot of gabe fox as well there's a bunch of different people out there who are mixing cocktails on twitch and like i feel like there's a small number of us and i it'd be really cool if uh if there because i know like when i first got into this whole thing i was like if there were like other people out there on twitch who were also making cocktails i had like no way to properly search for you people um twitch changed up their um their tagging system where now you can make your own custom tags and if you tag yourself with cocktail more than likely we will find you at some point or at least i will find you and i encourage us all to kind of to help help each other out 
just seems like a cool thing. I'm one of the small fries, so maybe that sounds like I'm just trying to like get like free attention and stuff and work off of the names of the greats, but I, I wanna I wanna help. If there's any way that we can do things like that, be more of a community together, that'd be really cool. In any case, we enough about me. More on the cocktails. The next one that we have is from this book over here called Around the World in 80 Cocktails. And I was kind of flipping through this the other day. This is something that my fiance bought for me from one of the stores in Disney World. I think the store was called Sugar Boo and Co, if I'm correct in saying, but perhaps not. And um, it's by a guy named Chad Parkhill. And the idea is that, you know, depending on where you are in the world, cocktails, like alcohol and whatnot is in like the DNA of society. So I think Chad wound up going around the world and picking out like a cocktail from each of a few different locations um, to create 80 cocktails or perhaps more. I don't know. I didn't actually uh, count here to kind of get an idea of the, how to taste the world. And one of the things that I run into is it is kind of difficult to taste around the world because it's a little difficult to get your hands on certain ingredients that appear in different parts of the world that don't appear here. I live in Pennsylvania and eventually I don't want to live here anymore because the liquor laws around here are a little weird and it has to go through like, each liquor has to go through like a rigorous like screening process. So it's difficult for me to kind of get my hands on certain spirits and stuff. And although there are online marketplaces that kind of circumvent that, Sometimes they don't ship to my address, which is which is kind of unfortunate. But in the rare cases where I am able to find something out there, or it's become so popular that it has to get through the system, like Fernet Branca, I'm really happy to get my hands on it. Also, my family lives my family lives in New Jersey, so I can always go back to New Jersey or drive over to Delaware because I'm in Philadelphia and pick up pretty much whatever I need. Haven't been able to do that recently, but you kind of get a little bit of a taste of the world. Um, the, the kind of tangent that I went on there is like there's so many different like cocktail spirits out there or rather fermented things out there in the world that I really wish I could try them all. Uh, and one day I hope to when, uh, when I can kind of get my hands in all the different locations and stuff. One day I will. Um, that, I, I don't know. How, that, that's kind of a summary of this book here. It's not at all what the recipe that we're going for next is because um, it uses Fernet Branca, which obviously I already have here. Uh, Fernet Branca is used in a recipe called Conde Nicolo, Conde Nicolo, I believe. Nicolo, Nicolo, because it's got two C's there. Uh, although, to be perfectly honest, that might actually be um, that might be that might be Spanish. It's on the page for Argentina because, as we mentioned before, Fernet Branca is really, really popular uh, in Argentina, mixing it with Coca Cola. So there's a cocktail that comes from there, um, specifically from Buenos Aires, that is called Cone Nicolo, which translates roughly to. I'm gonna Google it because I'm genuinely curious, and if I say it here on stream, it will be like memorialized so that when I forget one day, I can just go back to the Fernet Branca stream and um, I'll know what it was that I was talking about. Conde Nicolo, translation, translation. Can we translate? Google, ah, I didn't do that right. I definitely did not write translate correctly. I need to have like a translator like app, like on standby to be able to do that. Nicolo de Conti is an Italian merchant. Conde Nicolo, oh, you know what? Google is stupid. Let's just go into the book itself. There's a whole, the, what's really, really cool about Chad's book here is that the, what they put together a whole like page of the history of maybe the ingredients in the cocktail, the cocktail itself, something about the area, similarities and whatnot, tips. It's cool. So allow me to not like beat around the bush. Um, Chad says, Argentinians love Fernet Branca. Actually, that might be putting it a little mildly. Argentinians love Fernet Branca so much that the distillery in Buenos Aires that makes it for the South American market cranked out 4 million cases of the stuff in 2013 and is working on expanding production to twice that amount. They love it so much that a Fernando, a mixture of Fernet Branca and Coca-Cola, aka the Fernet Con Coca, is as commonplace a drink there as the humble gin and tonic as is in England. They love it so much that in 2014, the Argentinians Argentinian government added it to a price freeze program to protect it from inflation, all of which would make sense if Fernet Branca was Argentinian, but in fact, it's Italian specifically from Milan. Fernet Branca first arrived in Argentina in the late 19th century alongside Italian immigrants who had picked up a taste for this profoundly bitter herbaceous substance that it's after its launch in Milan in 1845. I think I said 1835. That's wrong. 
It's 45, evidently. Fernet Branca was originally sold as medicine rather than a recreational drink, a veritable panacea capable of easing menstrual pain, aiding digestion, diminishing anxiety, extinguishing headaches, and counteracting the effects of old age. It was a strong booze laced with not inconsiderable amounts of opiates, now reduced to trace amounts. Opium? You say? In any case, now it's in trace amounts, which probably helped its popularity in Argentina. In the 1990s, the Argentinian branch of Fratelli Branca commenced an aggressive marketing push to young consumers to pair it with Coca-Cola in the Fernando. The popularity of the Fernando is now something of a double-edged sword for Fernet Branca in Argentina. Many drinkers now think that this spirit should only ever be mixed with cola. Speakeasy Bar Harrison in Buenos Aires challenges this perception in the Conde Nicolo, a cocktail named after the current chairman of Fratelli Branca, Nicolo Branca. Evidently. So, it's actually named after one of the merchants. Or, or not one of the merchants, one of the uh, current leaders in the area. Um, the internet told me it was because of some merchant and stuff. And of course, of course, if you're going to bring up merchants, you have to bring up it's it Italy. Because I think it was the merchant of Venice, I think, is a character in like Civilization, which I'm pretty sure is historically accurate. Although I could be wrong on that because I haven't played Civilization in a while. I'm not really a history buff. Anyway, Conde Nicolo. How do you make a Conde Nicolo? You have to use some ginger, fernet branca, lime juice, cinnamon syrup, ground, ground cinnamon to garnish, and an apple slice, which I have my apple slice for. To create this cocktail, we're going to place ginger in a cocktail shaker and muddle it thoroughly, add remaining ingredients on top of it with some ice, shake thoroughly, double strain into a chilled teacup. I have a teacup chilling. Excuse me. And garnish with some ground cinnamon. <laughs> I have some cinnamon syrup. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'll take a little drink of water so I'm not hiccuping. Thank you for that reminder to hydrate, body. Um, there's a tip here about how to create your own um, cinnamon syrup. I did not particularly follow it. I had some prepared ahead of time. Um, to make it, you dissolve one cup of sugar in one cup of hot water, add four or five medium cinnamon sticks broken up, infuse in the refrigerator for 24 hours, strain, and decant into a sterilized container and store in the refrigerator. We will get started creating a Conde Nicolo. And I'm gonna put this below my below my microphone over there so I can see my ingredients here. Um, hopefully that didn't connect. We did not disconnect the microphone. We are okay. So let's go get our ingredients, right? We need a cocktail shaker, which I happen to have. Whoa, it didn't want to come apart. I thought that was going to be cool. Oh, well. Cocktail shaker. We're going to need some ginger. I got some ginger. If you're a person out there who suffers from certain, um, material, material problems, problems of the body, might I recommend ginger tea to ooze, ease your gastrointestinal ooze? Uh, for a while, I would make myself ginger tea uh, every morning to kind of seize my, soothe, soothe my gastrointestinal distress. Um, I haven't done it in a while, mostly just because I'm lazy, but I really should be. So it doesn't say anything about peeling the ginger ahead of time. If I were to make my ginger tea, what I would do is I would take the little ginger piece, I would peel it a bit with a spoon, you don't even need a knife, and you just kind of stick it in hot water for like as much as you want to and infuse it to your heart's content. Ginger is spicy. It's got a nice spice to it, but it's also juicy. You like that. So this one calls for two little round discs of that ginger, which we're going to muddle in the bottom of our cocktail shaker before we add ice to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my little, one of my little ginger nubs, take it off, and I'm going to take one disc and then another disc. I really like ginger, so I know what I'm getting myself into over here. And if you're into ginger too, well, ooh, sky's the limit on that. I'm doing some two hefty discs here. Hopefully that'll be enough. We're gonna take those, put it into the bottom of our shaker here. I'm gonna do the small, the small one, because it just, just makes it easier for me. Put that back, you don't need that. Grab a muddler and give it a little bit of a muddle. Usually what I do for my ginger is I'll kind of, I'll chop it up into little bits um, and I will kind of, I will put it in a tea bag and like I said, kind of put it over ice. By crushing it up, there's a cool little chemical process there. You're increasing the surface area so more of the infusion happens and me who like ginger, like to see the infusion happen. It's got a, ugh, I love the smell of ginger. It's almost, it's like, it's like lemon pledge 
<laughs> ginger kind of smells like cleaning product to me, not gonna lie. Uh, but it's pleasant. It's pleasant in a very, very nice way. All right, so I've muddled up my ginger. Don't need my muddler anymore. Score, I hit it in the bucket. Um, and we're next gonna need to add some ice on top of that as well as our liquid reagent. So I'm gonna go get myself some ice. I'm gonna get myself a big cube, which I'll pull off camera. My patented big cube technique. And some two little cubes, which I will pull also pull off camera and I'll just bring them over and you'll just have to take my word for it. No, just kidding, I, I don't like to lie. Well Here's one cube, one big cube. Little cube, little cube. And I guess technically speaking, um, according to uh, another book, Liquid Intelligence, you're supposed to take the ice and put it into the glass first. Oh, you know what? Actually, let's do that, because we can do that. We'll put the ice in the big glass. I remember now. I had forgotten. You take the ice and you put it in the big glass. Then you put your reagents into the small glass, then you dump out the excess liquid as the ice comes up to temperature, and then you combine them together. It's a bit of a... I've been trying to slow down a little bit while we make cocktails so that I can improve my own technique over here, and I think I've been doing rather well. The fact that I stopped myself is step number one. That's a very, very impressive thing. Um, what else do we need in this? Next, we need 60 milliliters, or about two fluid ounces, of Fernet Branca. So this one is on the boozier side. Put in two full ounces of liquor in there. I have a little bit left over from the last cocktail. Pour it over the top. I spilled a little bit, but it's okay, because I was over top of the glass this time. So if I spill, nothing's wasted. Wasted, dude. Fernet Branca. It's the star of the episode today. Next, we're gonna need 30 milliliters of lime juice. Now, if you have limes freshly squeezed, obviously, that's the way to go. If you have lime juice in a container because that's all you can get, then also, that's that's what you got, so you might as well use it. A while ago, I juiced a shit ton of limes. What I did was I purchased too much limes for a punch that we made uh, during our 24-hour charity stream, and I was like, what the heck do I do with the rest of these limes? I put too much. The recipe said, I think it was like 16, it was like enough for like 16, 32 ounces of lemon or lime, and I bought lemon and lime by mistake, and I had a ton of limes left over, so I was like, what the heck do I do with this stuff? I did a little bit of Google searching. Apparently, you can just take like citrus juice, freeze it, and unthaw it, and it's like, it's good as new, uh, which is actually kind of interesting. At some point, I wanna make a video about what happened when I actually froze this lime juice. It was actually really interesting. I took the lime juice, and I put it in the freezer, and then as I went back to it, I noticed there was like this film on top of it, and, and I was like, what the heck is this? So being the person I am, I put my finger in it, and then I put it in my mouth, and it was super, super duper 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 sour. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'm gonna guess that this is lime oil, cause it's super freaking sour, um, and it's super freaking sour. So I kind of, I like, I took the frozen container of lime juice and like tilted it in the freezer over top of a little like baby food container and collected as much of it as I can. And for a new, little New Year's event that we had, I made these like, these little like, gummy bears by combining it with gelatin and they're like so they're so so sour they're a little they didn't really constitute very well because i froze them and you're apparently not supposed to freeze them but like oh oh it's like so sour oh my god it's so 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 sour and like it doesn't necessarily taste like lime. Like, it's got that lime to it, but it almost, it's, it's like more sour than lime. So I'm guessing if it is lime oil, the lime oil didn't freeze. Instead, it's separated from the ice that froze inside of the lime juice itself. And so I concentrated it by accident. And it was actually pretty cool. But I do have some of that leftover uh, lime juice that I defawed uh, that I have accessible for this episode. This came fresh out of the freezer um, earlier today and is thawed specifically for this episode. We need 30 milliliters of that lime juice. About an ounce. So I'm gonna take some of it, take it out, pour it in. Cause I'm trying to I'm trying to become better at like not wasting things. And oftentimes I waste stuff. I was actually trying to look Google the other day what the best thing to do for um like fruit rinds and stuff is. Cause I like I need to research what my composting options are here in Philadelphia. Cause I don't have enough space to like compost stuff and I really don't want to ignore uh, annoy my neighbors. But I'm, filled, I'm pretty sure there's composting systems, and if I have to pay for that, I produce a lot of waste on the stream here, and I'd rather I'd rather do something about it because I feel like I have, because I want to have control, really. I want to have control. 
And the next ingredient that we're gonna need is 30 milliliters of cinnamon syrup. Like the recipe says here, or the bartender's tip rather, you can take equal parts sugar and water, put them together, combine with five to six cinnamon sticks. After you bring it to a boil, bring it down and let it cool in a refrigerator overnight for at least 24 hours, then separate the cinnamon sticks and you have a really, really, really powerful cinnamon syrup. This is my cinnamon syrup. I'm keeping it in a little flask here. I don't remember what I did. I probably combined equal parts sugar and water and put like three to four big old cinnamon sticks in there. Specifically, salon cinnamon sticks, which I find actually has a different flavor than the non-salon cinnamon sticks, which is actually kind of cool. Because I realize it's like a very, it's a, it's a stark difference. And if you bite on the salon cinnamon sticks, it's got a nice like spice to it. It's actually kind of cool. But we'll need a full ounce or about 30 milliliters of this as well. It comes out funnily in my in my flask. This is all the extra. Uh, I made like a lot of cinnamon syrup, so this was all of the excess in my head. Plenty, plenty of it. Things are getting a little sticky, so I'll apply a little water, a little bit of water. Clean myself off. Clean my bar off too. A little bit of a mess over here. It isn't a bar, like you're not a bartender unless you clean your bar, right? Because you because you love this thing. I'm actually some researching some techniques to be able to keep this bar looking shiny. So I got myself some old English wood spray for cleaning the wood because I'm making messes all over it every single week. And what I eventually want to do is I want to completely sand this thing down and completely re-varnish it. And at some point I will. Um, but right now it's just not within the cards. So that's pretty much it. Out of, those are all the ingredients that you're putting in your cocktail shaker. You're adding your Frenet Branca, your crushed up ginger, uh, lime juice, and cinnamon syrup in a ratio of two to one to one Frenet, lime, cinnamon syrup, uh, base being an ounce or 30 milliliters if that's your thing. And then you would muddle up two little coin sized bits of ginger in there. I made mine kind of thick because I like ginger. So what I think is going to happen here is we're going to have a sourness from the lime juice. We're gonna have a bitterness from the fernet. We're gonna have a spiciness from the ginger. And then all of that is gonna be rounded together by this other sort of like, sort of like, like earthy spiciness from the cinnamon. I have no idea what this is gonna taste like. And I'm really, really excited to try it. So let's get into it. I'm gonna combine things together. I'm gonna dump out any excess water that I have over here. Which there was a little bit of, so I'm glad I did that. We'll combine things together. Give that a slap. And give it a bit of a shake. Apparently, according to the the, art, the the books out there of science, it doesn't really matter what your shaking technique is. You can do pretty much whatever you want to. I've seen some people start off slow and then make it go fast. I'm not, I'm not a professional, so you do do whatever makes you feel comfortable. I'm gonna take my time. I think that's probably good. We're gonna take that out and double strain it into a chilled teacup, which I happen to have chilling over here, naturally. And before, as our, as our teacup kind of collects its kind of uh, ice on the side, ooh, it's, that's nice looking. Um, I'd zoom in on it, but to be perfectly honest, well, actually, you know what? I am gonna zoom in on it. I adjusted the angle of the camera so we actually get to see into the top of the glass here. It's, it's mesmerizing. I also need to cut off a slice of this apple over here because I need an apple slice to be able to bring this whole thing together. So I'm going to do that real quickly. Well, I have my apple here. I don't have a big enough... Um, I'm trying to get a small side of this apple. I don't need a very big piece. I just need a consistent piece. Oh, that's going to be great. That's going to be great. Oh, is it going to be perfect? Is it going to be perfect? Yes! It's a very, very large apple piece. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to trim this a little bit. That is a very, very large apple piece. Let's just put the knife there and... Can I just, like... <laughs> I'm making an apple circle. It says I'll garnish with an apple slice. And I have a very large Granny Smith apple. There we go. That's the, sli <laughs> That's the slice I'm going to use for my garnish. And I will... I will enjoy the rest of this. Later. Put that over there. Actually, I'm just gonna rim my water glass with it. Perfect. This is the, this is the end of it. I don't know if I need that anymore. I'll take what I can from it. Trying to be as least wasteful as possible. I will need this in a moment. 
Let's get some sacrificial yoga blocks. Zoom in on this and see how we do. Do we have enough? Oh my God! My sacrificial yoga blocks are just not cutting it anymore. Oh yeah, they are. Oh yeah, they are. Hey, old bud. How you doing there? This is precarious as hell. And this is a very nice teacup. At least I think. We're gonna double strain that over top. I'll grab my one strainer from here, back there. I'll grab my other strainer from over here. Let's give it a pour. This is called Conde Nicolo. Combines Fernet Branco, lime juice, cinnamon syrup, and ginger together. Oh yeah. That is a fine, fine color. Does it actually reach the camera? Can we actually see what's going on? I don't know. When I put the apple in there, maybe the level will come up to where it needs to be. Put this away. Whoops. It's a little noisy over here. We'll add our little apple slice. Oh, we also need ground cinnamon. I got ground cinnamon. Where's my ground cinnamon at? That's ginger. Where is my ground cinnamon? Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to ground my instant because uh, I don't have any ground cinnamon up here. No problem. I got my cinnamon and my cinnamon sticks, and I got a grater. Um, <laughs> grater? <laughs> I hardly know her. Tee <laughs> hee. Let's grate some cinnamon on top of it. Make it fresh. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. Oh, and it smells good too. Wow. Who knew that I could be so turned on by a smell? All right. It's a little, little apple wheel on top of there. Um, Y'all can't see at all what that looks like, and I am so sorry. Um, so I'm going to take a picture of it and throw it in the Discord. It's so beautiful looking. I haven't taken a picture of any of these cocktails here. My goodness. Here's another one. Here's, here's these other ones. And the Fernet. Obligatory picture. I'm like... Completely forgot about the picture today. Conde Nicolo. And uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, the very precarious job that I did here, uh, stacking up the yoga blocks. I'm going to take this. I'm spidering my glass. I'm not supposed to be doing this, but I'm serving it to myself, so I'm going to be okay with that. What does that look like? I'm going to pop the picture in the Discord um, because I feel bad that nobody can see it. I'm, I'm attempting to work on that. I've seen a couple of different cocktail creators out there who have a particular angle specifically to be able to show off the cocktails, and I want, I want a piece of that, and eventually we will get there. Um, so I'm going to pop this in our Discord real quick. If, if I, This is my no means my way of promoting the Discord, but I pop my recipes all in there, so it's pretty great. This is a picture of... Conde Nicolo. Nicolo? It's two C's. Yes, and one L. Did I spell that wrong? Oh, I didn't change the recipe! Oh my god! I didn't change the recipe up here. My goodness, it's not fun. See with me? I changed it. Ah, I need more water. Clearly, my head is not on my shoulders today. Conde Nicolo. Conde. Nicolo. What direction is that accent? That way. That's the current recipe. I messed it up. That's okay. Oh, my books are blocking it. Good. That's crazy. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. I'm a loser. I trust no one around us. I'm a taste of the thing. Uh, Conde Luca, Con, yeah, Conde Nicolo. I sent the picture in the Discord. Join it if you want to. I'm trying to build a little bit of a community there. But what does it taste like? That's the real question. What the heck does it taste like? Well, it's got cinnamon in there. It's got ginger in there. It's got Fernet Branca in there. It's got some eucalyptus notes and whatever in there. I am. Let's see. And it's got an apple on top of it. Why? Who knows? Whoa. There is a lot happening there. My goodness. That is so... Excuse me. 
spice e. It's very spice e. And when I mean spice e, what I mean is that I taste the cinnamon in there. I taste the ginger in there. Like right up on top. Mostly because there's cinnamon on top of it and there's also ground up ginger in there and ginger is really, really noticeable. The bitterness from the fernet is almost blocked? No, it like it blends in with everything else going on there. That's really cool. I don't know if it's necessarily my flavor. Um, there's a bit of a sweetness there. I feel like you could probably use with some more cinnamon syrup if I wanted to bring it up to a sweetness level that I would really, really be into. But it's cool. It's also really cold, too. So the first thing I'm getting is, like, the bitterness from the fernet is prominent there. When I breathe out, I'm getting the lime juice. Getting the sourness there. The sourness is actually kind of transformed. It doesn't really... I feel like there's a particular sourness to lime juice. There's a particular sourness to grapefruit juice and lemon juice and orange juice and whatnot. And the sourness is transformed. It doesn't necessarily taste like a lime citrus anymore. A slime sourness. A slime sourness. Sourness of slime? Lime ourness? Slime lour? Anyways. But like combines with the ginger. So the lime juice and the ginger go really, really well together. The cinnamon is just an excellent placement there. I think there's a sweetness to it that is not super duper prominent, but the cinnamon is noticeable. Not just because like, I think the grated cinnamon on top is probably what I'm getting the most from, but everything else going on underneath. It's very good. It's like when I take a sip of this, my mind, my, my mouth wants to say sour. But as soon as it wants to say sour, it says, no, 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 sweet. And as soon as I want to say sweet, it says, no, 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 ginger, ginger spicy. It's cool. And then what it leaves on the mouthfeel is a dryness from the cinnamon probably that I sprinkled up on top and a pleasantness. Like the mintiness of the Fernet Branca and the spiciness of the ginger just like combined together. It very, it very much, the ginger in there reminds me a lot of uh, meals that I've had at Indian restaurants before. And I don't know ex what dish, but like, that's what it's making me think of. There's a restaurant down the road called King of Tandoor, which Anna and I have frequented. Not recently, but we've been there a little bit. And like, there's some, something, something they put in one of the meals that they serve there. It's probably just ginger. Reminds me of one of the, um, one of the meals that they serve. It's good. is so interesting and like it's dry it's very very dry almost like a dry, almost like enough like enough tannins to make me think like there might be some like component of red wine in there but like there's no like there's no like deep red berry cherry notes or anything for me to think that there's wine in here it probably wouldn't go too bad with like a dry wine like a merlot or something if you added like a little bit in there for like maybe color or maybe they change the the, um, the flavor around a little bit but that's pretty good that's a pretty good! I kind of like that! Wow! It's cool! And then there's an apple floating on top of it, which is not... The the the, uh, the picture that they have in here... It, this book is also, like, it's very, very well illustrated. The book itself has, like, this little, like, image here of, like, a wavy apple, like, kind of sitting in the teacup. I don't think I did a very good job recreating the picture. This is a beautiful-looking teacup. But, like, there's this, like, wavy apple thing on top, and I, I could not... I couldn't cut my um, I couldn't cut my apple that thin to be able to wave it like that. Um, I'm still working on my garnish game. My garnish game is lacking. I know that, but that was good. I like that. Conde Nicolo, another Fernet cocktail from Around the World in 80 Cocktails, which I have covered. I, I, this book has popped up on stream at least once or twice. Once or twice so far. But back before we had the bar here, which continues to remain unnamed. But, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Fill up on water there, take a little snack break. I've been taking supplements of vitamin C and zinc and whatnot to uh, fight off the sickness. I think it helps. The zinc when it hits my stomach like makes me want to throw up though. Something about, like, 
metal in my stomach, I guess. That's good. What have we covered for so far? What else is there to do? Oh, there's so much fernet that exists out there. We made the fanchuli. We did, um, we did Conde Nicolo. Um, gotta go back to my menu over here. I navigate through things using an app that I've got on my, um, my surface here. And there's really only one more cocktail here that I have that I want to really be able to go over with you guys. And it uses is uh, it's called a pick me up. It's also from the Thousand and One Cocktails book, specifically on page thirty three. And it combines Fernet Branca with Curacao. Uh, I don't really have Curacao specifically, but I have an orange liqueur that's very very orange zesty that I kind of want to try it with. Um, and you combine it with brandy and some champagne. So it's a different. It kind of it. it changes the complexity around a little bit we're adding a little bit of wine to it we're adding some bubbles to it so the bubbles we've already seen in our ginger ale and coca-cola exploits we've seen we haven't seen wine or like a white wine that's bubbly added to the fernet yet um but we have seen orange added to it already like in the orange juice um cocktail that was a wake wake up call wake up call this one's called the pick me up so i'm getting a little confused and then instead we actually add a base spirit on top of this previously with the fanchuli we added some whiskey to it which is one base spirit which kind of accents i guess the kind of oakier vanilla notes that are coming from uh what the fernet is usually um left to sit for a year in um but the brandy brandy too depending on what kind of brandy you use might also have like a kind of like a oak cask like age uh darkening process um that we that we'll explore in this next cocktail here too and that'll be the last one that i have for tonight at least for the most part unless we find out wound up figure something out along the way uh, i gotta take a quick break so i'm gonna head downstairs and go take a little break for or, and i'll be back up here in a minute or so if anybody out there does have some ideas for something that they do want to see the fernet bronca in please let me know feel free to pop a message and chat over here if i have it I'll try it. It's all about learning new things and learning new things together. So I'll be back in just a moment. And I'm a market is so. Like this. Whoa, hi there. BRB. We'll be back after this sh short commercial break. What am I saying commercial break? I really don't. I really don't run ads on the stream. Not for the most part. I just haven't found a reason to yet. Skibbity fiddle. I've returned. Walking back on camera. Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Cameron and I've returned and I am no longer burbing anymore. So allow me to erase this from the board because I don't need it no more. I'm no longer burbing. I have returned from my burb. Yeah, that's fine looking. Uh, yeah. That's the cool thing about installing a blackboard on your wall. <laughs> this is my apartment. I, I rent here. I lease. Or I rent and I put a blackboard on my wall. Uh, it's actually temporary wallpaper. Tem paper is the brand, and I actually kind of like it. The hardest part has been f trying to find like the proper like markers and stuff to use. I found this brand, um, white chalk marker, chalky chalky crown. I kind of like chalky crown so far. They're they're the leading brand. I have sharpie markers. I have sharpie like chalk markers in all different colors. They kind of suck. There's this other brand too called Chocola. Chocola has some nice colors, but. Some of the colors are, it's inconsistent. Some of the colors are really good, some of them aren't. Like the oranges, I just had to throw out the other day. Very unfortunate. I just took a sip again after returning from my little bathroom break of a, co uh, of a cocktail called Conde Nicola. Um, it's that one, it's the one that I have on the board, the one that we just made here. Then it has some, it's got ginger in it, muddled on up, it's got Fernet Branca in it, it's got lime juice in it, it's got cinnamon syrup in it, some cinnamon jizzed on top i don't know why i just said that <laughs> this on top i put it on top of it and we also put a little um apple apple uh, wheel there as well uh, for a little bit of a touch there it's nice it's got a sourness it's got a spiciness from the cinnamon and the ginger kind of working together the cinnamon i feel like ginger is spicy and sour lime is sour cinnamon is spicy and you put that together and it combines so well with the fernet uh, which has like this kind of like like in in this cocktail it really accents the more earthy notes of the ginger uh and of the cinnamon um specifically the salon cinnamon the c-e-y-l-o-n stuff it's really really good i like that it's really really dry probably because i just grated a bunch of cinnamon on it um which is probably the reason why i'm getting such a dryness there but like aside from that actually if i take it from the edge that doesn't have as much ground on it
No, it still is. Wow, that is a that is that is dry. Oh, I like that. I really, really do. That's wonderfully complex. I'm gonna put that off to the side. Made a couple other things so far. We made Fanchuli, which is kind of a Manhattan with Fernet Bronca in it instead of bitters and stuff. We got a couple of different combinations with Fernet, including one that includes orange juice and Coca-Cola and ginger ale. I don't have any coffee here, otherwise we'd probably mix it in coffee. I might just do that in the morning as a nice way to start my day. Um, but I got one more prepared cocktail this evening. Uh, which I'll move into next. It's another one from this 1001 Cocktails book that I have over here that I'll bring up on screen. What do you give credit where credit is due around here? Um, most of the time, most of the time, I don't make my own recipes. Um, otherwise, I'd be famous. Um, but it comes from this book, 1001 Cocktails. I found it on the side of the road. Um, more contact tickets on that story the next time I forget that I've already brought it up before. On page 33 is this wake-up call, which combines Fernet Branca together with Curacao and Brandy. I don't actually have any Curacao, because for some reason here in Philadelphia, I was unable to source it properly. Um, but we do have something that's similar, something that I was able to find similarly, and it is on this page. If you have this book, it's down here in the corner. Looks like you serve it in a fancy old coupe glass. I got a fancy old coupe glass. And you place ice in a wine glass to chill. That's not a wine glass. Stir the other ingredients gradually. Top up with the champagne. Dress with the twist of a lemon peel. I don't have a lemon peel. That's my problem. You know, when your ingredients... So this book here will sometimes include the garnish in the ingredients list because when I track the I, I wound up taking these recipes I put them into my um my own little recipe keeper and then I will list out ingredients and directions and notes and whatnot separately for my own reference and when it doesn't put the garnish as an ingredient in the ingredients tab sometimes I wind up missing it so I don't actually have any lemons I just juiced all of my lemons the other day and made some lemonade for Anna so I don't have any left over um but I have some oranges so I'll use those it's not gonna be the same, but but I'll try my best. And the picture that they have here, I now now that I'm looking at it, does have a lemon in it, but it's very very slight, and I definitely missed that. All right, and I'm also not gonna use a wine glass because it's clearly not using a wine glass in the picture. So I will move this over here, and we will get started on the pick me up. I'm gonna take my Conde Nicolo and move, up, move that off to the side. I'm still getting into the habit of having a current recipe thing over here, so I missed it one time. I'm not gonna miss it this time. We're not on Conde Nicolo anymore. We're on wake-up call. Hopefully I can do this without racing the nice looking stuff. If anybody's ever been curious about how I put these decals on the board, I would love to cover that on stream at some point. It's really, it's really, really cool. It's called Wake Me Up. P -p 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 pick me up. Pick me up. Pick me up. It's up. Can't, can't pick up. Pick me up. It's up. Pick me? I don't know. You see that? Pick me. Pick me up before we go go. Cause I'm not planning on drinking solo. Pick me up before you go go. I don't wanna miss it when you hit that low because alcohol is a depressant. The goblet of water as opposed to the goblet of fire. I actually have a have anybody out there a Harry Potter fan? I have a book, I got so many books over the holiday season, and one of them is a Harry Potter inspired book. And although a lot of them are not really specifically harry potter that the harry potter inspired it can't be an official harry potter book um but i kind of want to cover those i could do a whole recipe i could, <laughs> I could do a whole episode maybe in multiple on them where i just go through that book and just make a bunch of cocktails on it sounds like fun take conde nicolo and put it off to the side i think oof out of all the cocktails that i've made so far which one do i want to drink as we make this next one fansuli this would be my cocktail of choice so what we gotta do is we have to get our pretend wine glass, and in this case I'm gonna use a coupe glass. It uh, it uses dashes, okay, it uses three dashes of Fernet and three dashes of Curacao. How do you wind up doing that? I can make some dashes, I can do some, I don't have a dasher bottle, but I can put like some splashes in there. We'll, we'll try to make it work, and then you add a measure of brandy. So I'm trying to think, like, would it make sense in a coupe glass or otherwise? Can then you top it with champagne? But, like, I don't know exactly how much champagne. I'm thinking if you're only adding three dashes each of the Fernet and the Curacao, that you don't really need that much volume to work with. Oh, but you're also putting ice in there. You're also putting ice in there. Okay, actually, I will use one of my bigger 
glasses over here. Um, it's not, I think it's deeper than a coupe glasses and pr uh, provides space for more liquid. Well, that's kind of pretty looking. Um, we will build this up here. I'm going to grab my Fernet, my Curacao, my Brandy, and my Champagne, and we'll come back over here. I'll add some ice to it, and we'll do a close-up on this one. I think that'll look pretty. It says we have to build this. We have to build this cocktail. So I'm going to go into my cabinet over here. It's, it, the cool part is, like, I have cabinets in this bar. It's just a home entertainment center that I repurpose. I can just go into, like, any of these containers and just, like, here we go. Now we've got Champagne. And honestly, I don't need this container anymore. That's all the tiny champagne that I have, so I'll put that off to the side. And I got one more champagne for later. There we go. Take that back. We need some curacao and some brandy. Select our ingredients. There's our champagne. There's our fernet. Um, you want to amp things up and be like a cognac in this? We got Prosecco. Okay, it says champagne. I'm using Prosecco. I'm gonna keep everything on the same level here. If I'm not using champagne, I'm not gonna use cognac. I'll just take some regular brandy that I got. And I don't have that much of it. This might actually work. I need my brandy. Cool. I'm gonna need that too. I need to go to the liquor store. Got my brandy, got my Fernet, got my Prosecco, need my Curacao or whatever I've got close. And I've got this Patron Citronga, which is the closest thing that I can find to, um, to Curacao in my local liquor store. I'm gonna get my sacrificial yoga blocks and we're doing a little bit of a zoom over here. Here we go. One and two. This is actually a pretty tall glass. I don't know if I necessarily need this much height on it. Pop it on over. Let's try to see if we can get a nice center right on it. At some point, I'll have another angle for recipes as well. Um, and we also need the orange. We're gonna wind up doing a little, I don't have a lemon peel, but I got an orange. We're going to use that uh, as the peel that we put over top of this. We're going to need some ice. So let's put some ice in that. Uh, it says a couple of them, so I'm not going to put a giant cube over top of it. Let's see. What is this? It's called Pick Me Up, so I don't have any... Um, none of my themed ice cubes would work very well here, so I'm just going to take some regular cubes that I have and put them in on top until it looks like it's kind of up there. Um, place the ice in a wine glass to chill. I'm going to put three in here. I think that'll probably be enough, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's plenty of ice. Definitely don't need any more than that. Next we'll do is we'll add three dashes of Fernet Branca. Dashes, they say. I have... I don't think of how it's best to do a dash. Um, I don't have any dashing things here. I should really take one of my Angostura bottles and, like, modify it so I can put other things into it. But I got a pipette. And so I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little pipette com container. I'm going to put a bit of Fernet in there. And I'm going to dash I'm going to dash it using my pipette. I'm going to try to be a little creative here. Hopefully not make a mess. Don't pour it over top of the, the bar. Not, or the little splash bed and not the bar itself. That'd be unfortunate. There we go. A little bit of fernet in my pipette there. Let's go for it. I need the equivalent of three dashes. To be perfectly honest, don't know how much that's supposed to be. So I'm going to take, let's do three pumps. We'll do three pumps of liqueur there. Two Step says, yes, yes, I'm getting nice and wet at the moment. It's raining here, by the way. Good. Oh, well, I'm glad we're all staying wet out there. Let's do, oh, my lights just went off. What the heck? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Oops, I think my I think my fiance just went to bed. I'm gonna turn my lights back on. <laughs> one second, one second. <laughs> that's so funny. The, li <laughs> the lights are back. Oh my god, that scared the hell out of me. I was like, how did the lights go off, but the stream didn't shut off? It's okay. We fixed it. We fixed it. That was kind of funny. Okay. Let's add our second dash in there. And we'll do our third dash, which are just kind of pipette pumps. So in this case, dashes are being replaced for pumps. Um, it's not raining over here, which is which is nice at least. Um, and if it was, you said it was raining over there, and I was like, oh my god, is the power out over here? And it was not. I'll put the rest of my fernet back in there. I don't need it anymore. And then I need three dashes of oh, what was it? It was curacao. Again, I don't have curacao per se, but I do have an orange liqueur, which was the closest to curacao that I could get. Uh, and by that I mean it's from Mexico, which is close to the Isle of Curacao. 
LOL, but that timing though, oh, so perfect. So, so perfect, my goodness. All right, let's try to see if I can do the same trick that I did uh, with the with the Fernet. Um, this bottle is awkward, so I might have a hard time with it. Let's see. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I'll do a little less of that, because I'm not gonna pour the Curacao back in, or I'm not gonna pour the orange liqueur back into here, um, because it's kind of contaminated with the um, with the Fernet. So, so take from the bottom, one dash, or pump, two dash, or pump, three dash, or pump. And that's what we're doing there. And then I will clean out this container for further use another time. I gotta get me one of those dasher bottles. It's easy. Again, in place of, let's say, more traditional curis, uh, curacao, I grab citronge, orange liqueur, the closest thing that I could find to curacao, and I didn't want to use blue curacao. It says curacao, not blue curacao, so I'm not going to opt for the blue stuff. That completely, completely messed things up, obviously. They also need a measure of brandy. When this book says a measure of brandy, it probably means an ounce, and I don't really have a lot of brandy left in this container over here, so we might only get an ounce out of it, for all I know. Let's see. Okay, yeah, there's still more in here. There's about two ounces. There's about two ounces that were left in here. And now there's only about one. So I'm gonna put that back down here, separate from my other bottles and stuff, so I remember that it's pretty much out. Let's see. We added our Fernet, we added our Curacao, we added our Brandy, and now we top it up with some uh, champagne. And by champagne, I mean this Prosecco that I've got laying around. hey -o. Pop that over in the background. Ugh, New Year's is behind us, but this is actually not a very... I, I don't really like these bottles because they're not very, um, they're not very exciting. They don't make much of a popping sound. Come on. There we go. Oh, okay. Didn't... All right. We don't need that. There we go. It kind of fizzes. It doesn't pop. It fizzes. So now what we gotta do is we gotta pop it off. We gotta top it off. With champagne, I have Prosecco. Just do whatever's in your means. Don't break the bank for this cocktail. We haven't even tried it yet. Lovely. And let's put a peel on there. What kind of peel? Orange peel. Although the recipe calls for a lemon peel. Let's see how good I can do on this peeling. I'm trying to work on my peeling technique. Let's see how let's see how long of an or a peel that I can do. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. All right, that's that's too much of a peel. <clears throat> that is way too much of a peel. It says dress with the twist of a lemon peel. It's not a lemon, but I'm going to twist this orange way up as much as I can back here. I'm going to give it I'm going to be real real aggressive with this back here cuz it's supposed to be lemony. So it's like eh. There we go. Lemon. That is delightful smelling. I love that. Nice, right in the right in the thing. This is how you create um, whatever cocktail it was. What was it called? Pick me up, pick me up before you go go. Time for the obligatory Instagram picture, right? I'm totally putting this on Instagram. I'm gonna put this from the side actually. My bicycle in the background. It's got the fernet in the picture. Let's see if I can get the fernet in the picture. Actually, let's like. Eat. Doing a little bit of doing a little bit of cinematography work back here. There we go. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's zoom on back out so we can drink it. Again, this is a the cocktail called the Pick Me Up, which I sourced from a thousand and one cocktails, a book I found on the side of the road that can that combines together Fernet Branca, Curacao, if you've got it, uh, brandy, and champagne, if you've got it. If not, you can use some prosecco, I guess, probably. That's that's the creative liberty that I took during this. We'll see if it winds up paying off. It kind of, I'm glad that we winded, uh, winded up at this point here because the idea that the Fernet has kind of made its, at least from our travels so far, the Fernet has made its way around a couple of different flavors so far. You can combine it with coffee. You can combine it with orange juice and top it off with club soda if you want to. You can combine it with Coca-Cola. There's there's a bubbliness there that it combines well with. There's a, a, a an orangeness. There's a, there's a sourness that it combines well with there. We mixed it with ginger earlier and cinnamon. There's a spiciness that Fernet also com, uh, compounds well with. It just seems to be such a 
like a versatile like like bitter liqueur to be used if balanced correctly in your cocktails and there there was even like the one over here used two whole ounces of this stuff and it was balanced out by the other ingredients because they were a lot more potently forward. That was the ginger and cinnamon one uh, and lime juice. Um, but it can be combined in sort of a, like as a, like a quarter of an ounce in a kind of modified Manhattan, and it's also balanced there. It seems like when you're mixing with Fernet Branca, the important thing there is balance and ratios and stuff, because some, depending on what ingredients you're putting on uh, uh, next to it, really depends on what that cocktail looks like in the very end. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one tastes. Mm. Was that mixed properly? Mm. Mm. Tastes like Prosecco. Tastes like alcoholic Prosecco. I'm getting... I'm getting the orange notes in there, like like in, se in the sense that the, or the the orange liqueur, aka the curacao in this case, is imparting. It's a very lemon. It's a very orange zesty feel. So I might be getting the twist of the orange, like the aroma, confused with the orange liqueur that I used in place of uh, what you would usually use, like a dry curacao for. Um, it's okay. It mostly just tastes like Prosecco, and the Prosecco I used is um, Lunetti, which I picked up during the holiday season. It, it's fine. It's a very bubbly cocktail. Honestly, if there, the Fernet in here is, there was only three dashes of it. There was three dashes of the Curacao and three dashes of the Fernet, and the Curacao is taking over, honestly. I don't know. I really don't like that. No, I really don't. To describe it, it's a little buttery, but it's like a like a bitter like a bitter butter buttery. So in the sense that the bitterness, I, I'm just kind of tasting the bitterness now. The bitterness of the Campari goes together really really well with a couple of different things. If this prosecco is buttery. It's not gelling very, very well with the butteriness there. It's not really going well. I'm picking up notes of like mango, probably from the Prosecco. I'm picking up notes of like a little, it's almost banana-like. I feel like a better comparison, it's all. It's almost as if I have some cachaça, which is kind of a rum adjacent, like, uh, like a rum adjacent base spirit that's very, very funky banana. I think this is going well with a sweet banana. What would we try here? They can't all be winners. No, they can't, Mark. No, they can't. That's all right. At least we tried it, though. I'm glad we're glad that we did. Total cheers to that, though. I mean, to be perfectly honest, there are so many different ways that you can kind of pick up a bottle of Fernet and mix it the way you want to. It doesn't have to be as complicated as this. It could be as simple as throwing it in some coffee, throwing it in, throwing it in some Coca-Cola or orange juice and topping it up with club soda, at least in my experience. I kind of want to see... I want to recover this cocktail. Like, I really, I, I don't, I don't like it. I really don't like it. I think the Prosecco is too overpowering and it just doesn't pair well with the Fernet. And I want to kind of see if we can transform this a little bit into something that is palatable to me. I want more sweetness to it, but I also want something that complements the Prosecco, but I really, mm, I think I want to put more Fernet in it. That's what I'm going to do. It called for originally three dashes of Fernet and I kind of eyeballed three dashes with the, um, with a little pipette that I have because I don't have a dasher, but I add some more Fernet there. I'm gonna see if that changes things up a little bit. The Fernet, to, in my opinion, doesn't have too much of a sweetness to it. We use one of these um, cocktail umbrellas. Doesn't have too much of a sweetness to it, um, but it should bring more of the bitter component to it, and I wanna see if that pairs okay with the Prosecco. Okay. That's a little bit better now. So now, instead of the Prosecco being super duper into your face, instead of picking up on more of those buttery notes, I'm getting more of the kind of sour citrusy notes of the Prosecco. Uh, either that being like an orange or... Dare I, dare I even say kumquat? If you've ever had a kumquat before, it's like a... It's sweet on the outside, sour on the inside, kind of overall tastes like an orange or a clementine. 
It's actually kind of interesting. That's not too bad. So it's a little more citrusy now, but it's not as citrusy as the Conde Nicolo, which combined like the, the cinnamon and stuff like that. So I wonder, I wasn't a big fan of Fernet Branca combined with the orange juice. So we diluted it with some club soda and that made it actually quite palatable. If there was a way to like kind of I guess dilute the Prosecco. I don't, I don't know. So this recipe is supposed to call for champagne, and maybe the fact that I used Prosecco was the problem. You know what? That's okay. They cannot all be winners, and I am okay with that. Does the recipe call for rocks? It does, actually. It specifically says to put rocks in the glass and then build on top of it. I thought maybe when it said put the ice in the glass that we were going to, like, chill the glass and then discard the ice, but no. It is kind of weird. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I was like, this is, is kind of weird. I honestly thought we were going to discard the ice because I've seen that done a lot. You know what? Pick me up is kind of like a let me down, to be honest. I put a little pun in there. But you know what? It's chill. They, can't all, they cannot all be winners. In the great words of Oof Mark before us, they cannot all be winners. And I will put that off to the side. Well, this has been fun. The whole history- wow, that is a very, very- that is not a very stable coaster. I don't like you. Get- whoops. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm not using you. Not if you're gonna be difficult. I got different coasters. This is a tall glass. I really like this glass. It's the only glass that I have. I'm spidering the glass again. Jeez. Don't do that, Cam. I'll put that off to the side. So essentially, what we've had here is a whole kind of rundown of Fernet Branca, a, a, appearing in various different forms here this is kind of a, all i've got planned for the evening um unless anybody's got any other ideas did anybody out there have any favorite drinks to make with fernet that could possibly bring us up from the letdown that was the pick me up i'm very very curious about that the whole idea of being able to dedicate a whole stream to our particular liqueur is to kind of try to figure out if we can dissect it Trying to see if there's any ways that we can we can combine it in ways that we had no idea that we were able to before. Just to give a quick rundown of where we've been so far, we started off with this bottle of Fernet Branca. Fernet Branca is an Italian liqueur, really, really popular in Argentina. We're using 40 different botanical spices, with, including, but not necessarily limited to, saffron, aloe, juniper, musk milfoil, colombo root, Chinese rhubarb, coffee, eucalyptus, malby, pine, and maybe opium? Once upon a time, perhaps, kind of like Coca-Cola with their cocaine once upon a time. We all get a little feisty in our young days. I'm currently in my young days, and I would consider this whole thing that we do here a little feisty. Um, but it's a wonderful liqueur. For me, it's very earthy, it's very piney, eucalyptus-y, menthol, kind of coffee-like, a bitterness akin to coffee grounds. If you've ever went to the store and like picked up a coffee bean from like, those dispensers and like put it in your mouth and crunched it up, that's the kind of bitterness that we're talking about there. Um, serve warm or cold. You can do that if you want to. I kind of like the way that it tastes warm. It's got a nice chocolatey note to it. Almost like muddy waters, I'd say. Not not the artist. Um, I mean like muddy waters. If I had to liken it to mud, you know? Um, but you can mix it with a variety of different things. I mixed it with Coca-Cola already, and I finished that drink off as we were kind of going over the history of it. It was born in 1845, I believe, by Mr. Bernardo something or other, and has evolved since then, wildly getting popular in the late 19th century in Argentina, as we mentioned before. You can mix it with orange juice, you can mix it with coffee, you can mix it with Coca-Cola, you can mix it with ginger ale, you can mix it with any, pretty much anything. Um, although for some reason, the whole, the citrusy side of things don't really bode well with my particular set of taste buds, but you could be different. You can combine it uh, in a drink called the fanciulli, which roughly translates to the boys or children in Italian, where you basically take a Manhattan and swap out the more bitter component with camp, uh, Fernet instead of, let's say, your Angostura bitters or other bitters of choice. You can also put it, uh, combine it with ginger root, lime juice, and cinnamon syrup in a cont uh, what was it called? Conde, Conde Nicolo, um, for something that's very, very spiced. It's got two whole ounces of the Fernet in it, it's 60 milliliters, and it's like the most voluminous spirit in that particular cocktail, but it tastes really, really good, and it's really, really balanced. I'd say it's, it's, it's spicy, cinnamon, ginger, spice type thing. And it's got a sourness to it that like really, really even things out. Um, and then we also had the pick-me-up, which was a bit of a letdown, to be perfectly honest. That combined um, Prosecco, a little bit of Fernet, a little bit of Curacao. I used some orange liqueur that I had, and you, um, 
and some brandy. You add brandy in there as well. You brought a whole ounce of brandy and then you fill it up with Prosecco. And it just felt, it felt weird. It felt like a really weird cocktail. It might just be because I'm not a big fan of the Prosecco I used. And you know, your cocktail is, it's gonna be no less than, I guess the ingredients that you put into it. If you put shitty ingredients into it, it might have something that looks pretty good, but like that could be, might not be worse. I, I don't know. I guess it's a, the mathematics there are up for debate. If I had to pick a favorite, Fernet con Coca, Fernet and Coca-Cola, it's just a classic combination. It's really, really good. I would say the Fanchuli, in the sense that you're kind of taking your taking your bitters and adding Fernet instead of, let's say, an Angostura, for instance, is really, really nice. Um, I'm kind of a kind of a short cocktail kind of guy, not stuffed mostly on the citrus. So otherwise, if I was more into citrus, I would probably pick the Conde Nicolo with the ginger in there. But the ginger kind of kind of bothers me. Sourness, not really my thing. So I'd probably go with a fanchuli, which combines one and a half ounces of whiskey, bourbon or rye, anything that you have, or about 44 milliliters, with three quarters of an ounce or 22 milliliters of sweet vermouth. They recommend like a via or Punta Mez, uh, but that's because this cocktail came about in, I think, in the 1910s, which was before Carpana Antica was a thing. I used Carpana Antica, which is pretty good. And then you add a quarter of an ounce, or about seven milliliters, of Fernet Branca on top of that. Uh, and you stir that together and strain it out. I think that's this is probably the cocktail that I'm going to enjoy after the fact. This is pretty much all that I have around here. This is all that I have planned. Thank you all so much for coming back to the bar. I'm really glad to be back. This is the first bar stream of 2023. I've been out sick a little bit, so it seems that, it seems that I'm not the only Twitch tender out there that has kind of gotten sick recently, which is kind of kind of interesting. I don't know how we're all in completely different, separate locations, but somehow we're all getting sick all at the same time. Coincidence? I think not. I don't really know. Maybe we're all like meeting up behind the scenes and like y'all don't even know it be really cool i should really get out more um after i recover from my sickness that is in any case that's all that i got over here thank you so much for coming to the bar i'll be back again next week with something completely different maybe it'll all be surrounding alcohol probably although i know it's technically dry january right now i don't observe dry january so i haven't done anything on it but we do cover mocktails every once in a while what i'll probably be doing is i'm trying to do something a little bit new i kind of said that my new year's resolution is to be more communal to kind of make this whole like stream experience thing here more le less about like just like me at the as the individual but more about the people out there and so i i'm having some streams coming up at some point where i'll be bringing some more people to the bar we can actually like you know chat with each other and be around each other and have some fun with it um i'm trying to hang in the discord server that we have which has channels for a bunch of different types of things i mostly post all my recipes and whatnot there um but i've been trying to make a habit of doing and i only just started it last week because the, that was the first stream of this year is i'll be hanging in the post stream voice channel after this just kind of doing stuff in general kind of working on a thumbnail cleaning things up and whatnot so if you want to pop it and hang and talk about cocktails or pretty much probably talk about whatever whatever you want to i am more than happy to entertain the thought and i'd be more than happy to I got another message from mark saying nice stream i came in late but was lurking that's an awesome fernet logo too did you draw that by hand i did but I have my secrets. What I do, and to reveal that secret, is I use a program called OBS, and in OBS, you can create a source, you can change the opacity on it to make it more or less, uh, oh, um, more or less translucent, and essentially, I will overlay images that I do some ed editing of, and I will zoom in onto it, and I'll kind of draw it while watching some YouTube on my phone, and like looking at um, a little Chrome remote desktop into my computer. Um, I am a pretty good drawer, although I cheat to get things like this happening. And I do appreciate the compliments. In any case, to everybody out there, no matter what time zone that you're in, if the sun is shining where you are and you're starting the day off with a cocktail, kudos to you. And may you have a wonderful rest of your day. The moon is up where I am, probably. I can't actually see the moon from this angle. But it's nighttime, and it's about time for me to head off. And I'll see you all next time for the next bar session that we have. Wednesdays at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be there or don't. I'll see you all next time. I, oh, I'm supposed to go to my ending screen. I forgot to. This is my ending screen. I'm back here. <laughs> I'm not going to spend too much time here. Thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate it. Cheers. Till next time, y'all. Bye.